Episode 120 of the Wilderness Podcast is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Wilderness Podcast. Our supporter of the week is Anthony Martinez. We are also brought to you by Audible. Get a free month and a free audiobook at audibletrial.com slash wild. Welcome to episode 120 of the Wilderness Podcast. If this was RuneScape 3, we would have a a maxed skill on our hands, wouldn't we? Anyways, I'm your host, Dills, and with me is Deegan. Hey, how's it going? What do you mean by, say, episode 112? 120. Oh, I thought you said, I was like, isn't that 120? (laughs) I I thought you said 112, that's my bad. We are unsynced this episode, but that's okay. Anyways, this week, what we have to talk about, we have another Twitch Prime promotion. Seems like this is happening a lot more often than not, doesn't it? Yeah. But Jagex wants th- our feedback on a few different things. Since February, it seems to be their quality of life month. This week, they're pulling some changes to skilling. And lastly, there is a new quest put into the game, free-to-play quest, that seemed to have ruffled some feathers. But there's a few things that are also added along with it. And for community chatter stuff, we have a new third-party client sort of emerged, but quickly got squashed. It was probably more close to a botting client. RuneLite releases some interesting plugins, and the, what do you want to call it, a controversial YouTube channel? Anyways, he put out a video recently talking about how he is basically getting permanently demonetized Mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. But we have a few things more to talk about, all looped into that. But before we get into that, Deegan, what was your week? Your week in review, how'd that go? Pretty good. I've been doing a bunch of Slayer, well, Hydra, I guess. Did a bunch of Hydra grinding. Pretty close to 99 Slayer. I think I'm like 200 or 300k-ish away. Wow. From 99. Getting any big drops from that Hydra? No, I I mean, I got the leather uh, a couple weeks ago. When I first started grinding it, and I got the the tail, and then just the eye. And then I started doing raids. No solos yet, just group raids. I Is di- solo something you're still going to be doing? Yeah, for sure. Solo raids are fun as hell. I I don't know. I did my first like 20 raids or so solo, and now I just can't be bothered unless I'm in a group. It's just, I find it more fun, and it seems quicker at least i mean well in groups it's way faster but i find solos are more uh it's just nice because it's all on you i don't like i don't i like to be able to like oh, i'm gonna go take a piss you know what i mean like, i like to be able to like do what i want and not worry about my pace or if i want to be as efficient and try and like get a best time i don't like i don't like pressuring people in my group on how fast or slow they can go i like killing ohm solo i like trying to run the hand and all that it's fun. It's more challenging solo, so that's why I like it. Fair enough. Yeah, like, uh, with the... So yeah, so I ended up buying a Dragon Hunter Lance. Nice. Um, tested it out at all? Yeah, yeah. At Ulm. And what's your ver- what's the verdict here? It's OP as hell. Thanks. So, it's so Thanks strong. So? Oh, yeah. I got hit with a really weird scan with the Duel Arena, actually. Oh, Almost shit. forgot about that. What are you doing at the Duel Arena? I was I was super bored, so I was like, "Eh, fuck it, I'll stake twenty mil, see what happens." <laughs> Jeez, rich people problems. I think the guy he did he hid stuff in his looting bag, I think, and then destroyed it just before the duel started. And then I I don't know what it was because like I'm very like vigilant whenever I'm staking to like just like if they have like random shit in their inventory, like like if they have like almost a full inventory of random stuff, just don't even take the duel. Like just look for a dueling ring, money. Plot tokens, yeah, they have, like a grazi or like a has, like weird things. Just don't eat, don't even like mess with it. But this guy had like a looting bag. He had like herb sacks. He had gem sacks. Coal bag. No, hmm, weird. And he had like money, plot tokens, and a ring. What ring? Like dueling ring. Oh, and um, <laughs> obviously, but he was like healing up mid-fight there was no food in his inventory there's no potions hmm. no prayers it was and i still almost killed him like i was whipping like hard 20s 20 pluses on him but um i think he like must have like slipped in food or something and then had it in his looting bag i don't know i like 
really, I, I couldn't figure it out. But, like, whatever. It was definitely interesting. I, I kind of want to know, if people know what the scam is, let me know, because I'm super curious. Yeah, that happened, and then... So you lost 20 mil. Yeah. Ugh. I got four-man decks and D-Claw, though, for through it raids. It's not bad. Yeah, I did a couple two-mans, didn't get anything from that. I don't know, and I'm just kind of planning out how I want to max my account after Slayer. Because once I'm done Slayer, I'm pretty much... Not how I'm going to max my account, but how I'm going to play it. Because mm-hmm. right now, I can I can sell off my bank for a T-Bow. Are you going to do that? Because you've talked about in the past how you want to do a T-Bow rebuild. Which mm-hmm. is, if you don't know what that is, it's where your bank value is like one bill, whatever it is that you can afford a T-Bow. So you sell everything off, and then you, got, you get just a T-Bow, Twisted Bow, and you rebuild all the other items. Which mm-hmm. I can... At first, I was like, why would you ever want to do that? But now as I'm getting, as my bank's growing, I can start to see the appeal in that because saving up for Primordial Boots, Pagasian Boots, Boots, Zemurakian Hasta, all these different smaller items, it's a lot, it's less daunting than saving up one bill for Twisted Bow. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, as of, like, when I first started thinking about doing it, like, a year ago, not many people were doing it. I guess just the average person I was, like, not average, but the people I talked to that didn't have T-Bows or anything were, like, that could be fun, but now I've talked to enough people that, like, if you want a max PVM bank, that's that's what you gotta do. You sell your bank off for a twisted bow. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, You keep your anguish, you keep your pagasians, you keep your archer ring. Yeah. Um, and then you just like camp Zalra for three thousand kills, oh, or God. or you go kill Zilliana if you want, get a little bit of money. You don't have to do three thousand Zalra, but you get a little bit of money. Go back to raids. Like, there's like a lot of things you can do, and you can quickly build up a bank. And it's nice, like if you do it like that, because like if you do Zalra without a Tebow, it's harder, but also you use a lot more supplies per kill. Okay. And so you get more kills per hour if you're using Blowpipe and Trident, like a eight-way switch. But you get more gold per hour if you're using a Twisted Bow because the only thing you're using is, like, the odd food. Maybe the odd, like, restore sip, but um, mainly arrows and teleport tabs. Like, you, you, like, the, um, yeah, pretty much what you're using, just, yeah, more cost-effective. But Interesting. And the good thing that... Let's say you do decide to sell off your bank for for a twisted bow. You still got things like void mm-hmm. or your fighter torso that these untradeables that you can still use. Yeah. So you're not just walking around naked with a T-bow. Yeah. And then you like, you know, eventually can upgrade to blasty hide and stuff. Which kind of sounds fun. Like like I said, it sounds more fun to have to rebuy 10 of these items. That they cost a lot, but still, compared to a twisted bow, it's a lot less. Mm-hmm. I'd rather buy these ten items versus buying this one big item because, yeah, so, God, I can't imagine being like I got to save up one bill. Like that's gonna take me forever, unless you stake. In, unless you and stake. what happen, But that's the thing. What happens if I have like eight hundred mil cash? So like, yeah, chuck a fifty mil. Do a quick fifty. Who can You lose it. Like, that sucks. Still got 750 though, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or if you win, like that's nice. Like you're just way more tempted to stake. Yeah. Um, and when you get drops, like the percentage, it's like nice. I'm five percent on my way to a Tebow, or you're like, that's a dragon warhammer. Yeah. So there's like a lot of different ways, but the one thing that's kind of stopping me is that if I'm going to buy a Tebow, that's like an all in, that's my game plan. I'm gonna be like that's what I'll be doing for the year, is rebuilding my account. And you can't really go back on that. And Tebow has gone up like over 100 mil Ooh. in the semi-recent future or past. With the talks of them nerfing range, you know, it might be wise to sell off all my range gear now before it crashes. But I also want to max my account too. Yeah. And so I'm kind of tempted to just max all my buyables. Okay, so what what do you have left? For, like, 99s? Yeah, for buyables. Because you got fletching, right? Got fletching and cooking. I would need herb lore, crafting, smithing. Construction? Construction, yeah. Constructions, I got 83 construction, 90 herb lore, um, 85 crafting. Like, like they're all, like, pretty much, I guess, 
I can get it done in like a week. Like those I, three, and then smithing. If you're using gold ore, that's yeah. like that's your that's your twisted bow right there. Like the money that you would have spent on it, all spent on those skills, right? Construction's expensive. Crafting's expensive. No, it's like not that much. It's definitely no? like it's but crafting, lot. herb lore, smithing, and construction. Those four, you don't think would definitely not equal a Tebow? No? no way. Not even close. No. Construction would be, unless the prices have changed, like around 70 ish mil. Herblore is weird because, um, it's, you can, depending on which potion you make and how, what you're looking at for GP per XP or just speed. And then same thing with, um, crafting, how you look at it. And if you decide to alk it too. So yeah. if I do crafting first and I do bodies, like uh, leather bodies, then I would alk it on my way to 99 agility. Don't you have 99 magic? So? Yeah. Um, Can't you do it. You elk it because, like, you either elk it or you sell it at however much it would cost you to elk. So you just take the price and then factor in, like, nature and fire runes. Yeah. Um, And then you just sell at that price. But I'd probably just go for elking while I did 99 agility. But I kind of want to get all the Bibles out. And then eventually through... Things like mining, like I'm going to do a lot of blast mining, um, hunter, which I was into chins because that's like, um, I'd make like 90 mil if I do black chins or I make about 33 mil if I do herbivore pet, if I do herbivore and I, I kind of want that pet. Yeah. Um, it's hard because it's two pets from, from hunting, right? You, the chinchampa pet and the herbivore pet. Yeah, but I like Herbivore more, so I'd kind of fro- focus on that. I guess, like, fire making makes some money. Yeah, but, like, that's not really, that's not viable. If but... you get the buy, no, 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 well, it is. It can be, yeah. If you do the logs, but. Who's going to do that, though? The main thing is that I can get all the Bibles out of the way. They're nice and quick, like, r- like stupidly fast in comparison. Like, you compare, like, mining to smithing. Smithing's, like, over three times, or. Yeah, over like, it's like three, almost four times faster than mining. Yeah, if you're doing gold or at the blast mines. Yeah, I mean you could blast make, furnace. Sorry, you can make money if you uh, do like Addy bars. But that's what I like. I find Addy bars to be more relaxing. I found gold ore, at least for me. A lot of people have the opposite opinion, but mm-hmm. I like found me. yeah, I found gold ore to be more tedious, having to swap out your ice gloves. Yeah, or bucket of water. Yeah, you can do the like gauntlet swaps. I just don't like having to keep track of how much coal I have. Yeah, so that's where I guess people mm-hmm. differ. Yep. But like you can set it up so you you know, maybe I sell off my range gear before it crashes. Yeah. Get all my Bibles and then try and squeeze out as much as I can out of it, and then focus on skills like Hunter where I get some money back and mining where you get money back. Um you like after like 80 or 75 mining, I think. I forget what the numbers are. Maybe it's just 80 mining. That's where you get good money out of Blast Mine. I think it's... I thought it was 75. Yeah, because that's when you unlock Reunite Ore. Yeah. And you can kind of just like make your money back eventually. And then once they do crash, I can just buy them back. Hmm. Like my range gear. And it's not like a... F- I don't have to fully commit to it as well. Which is super nice. In terms of like I can... Like, do what I did with prayer, where I use all my GE slots, maybe, you know, I'll, like, get a bond on an account, because I have an idea for, like, a another account that I want to make. Um, God. <laughs> and then I can, like, flip and slowly buy whatever I want to do for in terms of, like, maxing out my Bibles and save as much money as possible and be as stingy as possible. Yeah, I don't know. So I'm tr- trying to, like, figure it out, because, like, honestly, I could have easily had 99 Slayer by now. But I decided just to get as many alchemical hydras as possible. And then I'm just not playing as much. Cause I'm trying to keep RuneScape to like... Yeah, well, you went from not even playing it to I w- playing I went it from, now, right? I went from playing the game for like 10 hours a day to not. <laughs> to zero. To like now I got to find an in-between. Which I, I think I've, I've I've got it pretty well. Like the days I, have, I have some days where I just rip RS... And then I have days where like I can rip RS, but I just chill, play other games, been reading a bit more, like nice. books. Um good old book, book learnings and things. Yeah, just like doing other things. Speaking of other things though, outside of RuneScape, started playing a lot of Rainbow Six Siege. Not a lot, but some. Fun. 
Yeah, I have a coworker that that plays it, and he like he goes pretty hard at it. She's so like just telling me certain things about the game, and uh, he's a pretty cool dude. So I was like, you know what? I'll try it out. He makes the game sound like it's fun once you kind of can get into it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, like, it's weird because I got the game on release, and I was like, eh, you know, I wasn't like really like this is it. Yeah, it's kind of boring. But now they made like a lot of changes since I last played, and a lot of updates. Some people love it. I play with. I worked with a coworker who, he loved that game, and he played with a bunch of friends. And he had a buddy who was he wanted to become like a professional streamer. I don't know off a whim or something. He's like, hey, I want to be a big streamer. So he started streaming it, and then we were at work together. And then he, the guy, told me he's like, hey, you should check out the stream. And you know, kind of, I got he knew I played a lot of video games, and I don't watch Twitch that much, but I'll watch it every now and then. But I guess he thought like you'll know what makes a good streamer. So, like, watch it and critique it. So I watched it for, like, five minutes, and I was like, all right, um, first tip is you got to stop dropping those N-bombs. Right? Oh, nice. You just, that's not going to... Yeah. You're just going to get banned. That's not... You're not it's no, not that, that you're not going to become famous. That just... sounds like a normal Rainbow Six player. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've learned some new words um, <laughs> playing. Let's just say some people complain that I swear too much on the podcast, and to them... I'm a nice Christian boy in comparison <laughs> to some of them. <laughs> Super fun game. And, like, normally I just kind of play casual on my own. And, like, I've talked about it in the past. Like, I'm pretty decent at shooters. Um, At least I used to be. Like, CSGO, I went, like, really hard at for a long time. And, like, I was super try hard and, like, tried getting into, like, the like, professional scene somewhat. I, I didn't make it too far, but, like, did, did some minor tournaments and stuff online. And, like, with my team that I had. And then, like, Overwatch was like a master at one point or like one win for masters but hmm. like i don't know so i'm like pretty i can pick them up pretty fine and um rainbow six it's like there's a lot of game knowledge in comparison to both those games yeah so I, like that's kind of what keeps me interested is like because normally i'm playing casuals but i was playing with someone in our cc and his buddies and they like know the strats and the maps and stuff mm-hmm. like they understand like the, the flow of the game so it kind of gives you like an, another level of appreciation of like how strategic it goes, and even like little things like the sound in the game. Like I'm like used to playing like CS or like Overwatch, where you just hear footsteps in like a general direction. And you're like, okay, in my head, I hear on the right side in this angle. I know the map, so I know where they are. Okay, yeah. But in Rainbow Six, you can hear like echoes throughout the hallways, and like the way it like hits your ear, like. I don't know this map at all, but it sounds like they're above me in this room that's going to be to the right at the end of a long hallway. Hmm, interesting. You know what I mean? Like, it's very realistic and, like, intuitive. Mm-hmm. And, like, that is, like, super... Like, I like that a lot. Yeah, it's cool. But other than that, I'm probably missing some stuff, but, yeah. What did you do this week? Busy with school, but who cares about that, so I won't go into that. We'll, we'll just get into what I did on RuneScape, because I'm in... I've been bouncing around to a lot of different things every day i feel like i have set a di- i have like eight different goals going on i'm really not making progress on any of them so it's like s- the good old days go yeah. mine one inventory of iron like yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go cut wood some wood cut. Yeah. yeah that's kind of what's happening i still have that hydra task from when i got it whenever ago a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago i'm still i crack away slowly at it but i'll get on do a handful of kills I either have to go or something else pops up. I'll do some raiding with people in the CC. There's some people who've been like rearing to learn how to do it. So we've been running them from time to time. And that's always that's always fun. And then I have I just start, decided to start doing Winter Todd whenever I'm doing if I'm doing something that requires my focus, but not enough focus that like I can still do Winter Todd is what I'm trying to say. Like. I don't want to do wood cutting if I'm watching videos for school on the side because you log out. I'll log out, but it's <laughs> like wood cutting. It's just so less focus is required that I get kind of bored. Yep. Whereas Winter Todd, you can do it, but I can still listen a hundred percent on to the videos, so I'm retaining most of that knowledge, mm-hmm. and I can watch it for the most part. I have my sound effects on, so I can hear when I get damaged and all that good stuff. So I decided to do Winter Todd for, you know, for, let's say I'm editing this podcast. I'm probably going to do Winter Todd because I can do them both pretty well, which it. So I also have like 90, I have 91 fire making, maybe 92. 
So I'm kind of getting close to that 99. I'm also 500k away from wood cutting. So I'm going to get a bunch of experience from wood cutting, getting to 99 fire making. I might get 99 wood cutting there. I don't think not not from winter Todd. I'm not sure because I've been I got let's see like 800k experience and it got me like 50k experience wood cutting. Yeah, I mean you'll you know you'll get some nice experience, but I'd be surprised. I'm well, anyways, I'll get pretty close to 99 wood cutting then. I'm at 400 like 50k to go. Also, that pet would be kind of cool to get. Like I said, anything that I'm doing, I kind of have in the back of my head like, oh, I kind of want that pet. Mm-hmm. So I have that going. And when I am like AFKing pretty hard, I've been going to rune crafting and doing the blood runes. Like I have this weird system, sort of. It's like this EHP, but it's my own. It's e- the casual EHP of like you want to. You know what it is? It's the Black Desert Online, the Eve effect, where it's like you. There's certain levels of AFKness, and you just hop around depending on which level you want to do. Yeah. But you don't want to just leave the game. Yeah. It's like Black Desert Online. Like, oh, I really want to focus. I'm going to go grind these dudes. Or like Eve, I'm going to go like get in team speak, fight some guys with my boys. Or it's like, I'm going to go to bed and like Black Desert, like, I'm going to train my horses while I sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's probably pretty, pretty close comparison. So if I'm in class, I'll be rune crafting. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to pick a skill. Like, I'm going to pick a skill that I'm going to do while I'm in class and I need to. AFK completely. Yep. I wanted to do fishing, but at the same time, I kind of want to get that golden tench. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know what? I'll put that to the side for now. What about mining? I could do motherload mining, but then I thought if I rune craft all the way to 99, I'm not going to. But let's pretend I had that Mm -hmm. that drive. You get mining experience. You get some crafting and mining experience, which gets me a little bit closer. So I'm like, you know what? I'll do some rune crafting. It's not bad money. It feels like it's not bad money because by the time I'm done class, I have like three, four hundred k worth of blood runes. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. So I have this weird EHP. Let's call it E. Let's call it DHP. Dill's D E H P. Dill's ex- efficient hours played. That's pretty good. I was thinking E H A F K P C H P. Casual hours played. That's pretty good too. Yeah. Anyways, it's like AFK efficient hours played, but mm-hmm. it's it's neither of those. So yeah, anyways, I got rune crafting going as well, and I'm just like not making progress anywhere, but I'm just bouncing between all of them. Yeah. And also doing farming. If I can only hop on for like twenty minutes, let's mm-hmm. say, I'll go to the farming guild, do those contracts real quick. So a lot of random fun stuff there. I was also flipping for the past couple weeks, but I kept it on the hush hush because my flips never really work out. But this time it did kind of worked out until it didn't, which is why I'm talking about it now. I was flipping dark trousers. You get them from Clue Scrolls, and they're worth about... I was buying them for 800k and then selling them for 1.2 mil. Damn. But I was able to sell like five of them. Buy and buy five and sell five in like overnight mm-hmm. for the most part. That's huge margins. I was making some good money. That's, so I was like, that's actually crazy margins for like how, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's because I got one from a clue scroll and then I sold it and I decided to look at how much they go for. And so the GE says they sell for 1.2 mil, but mine wasn't selling. I had to sell it for like 950K or 850K. Mm-hmm. So then I thought, so there's like 15 to 30 of these sold a day. So that's such a low amount that I could probably buy people who just want to get rid of theirs right away. Like yeah. what happened to me? But then at the same time, I can sell it for people who want to buy it right away. For yeah. I don't know why you want to. Oh, because it goes with the the tuxedo outfit. Yeah. So if it, somebody wants the tuxedo outfit, they'll buy it all at once. So yeah, I was doing that for a bit, and then it's they slowly stopped selling over time, mm-hmm. which is kind of bound to happen. But I got kind of cocky, and I was like, I'm going to start flipping all these different clue items. So now I have like 10 mummy heads in my bank that I bought for like 800k each. And I'm trying to sell them for like 900k each now, and it's not working. That happens. But sometimes you just have to wait. Like I had a bunch of dragon chain bodies. I think I talked about this like a couple episodes ago when I bought them. When they went down, they went from 1 mil to 200k. During Dragon Slayer 2. Mm-hmm. And so I, I grabbed like a bunch. Like I, I bought like a little bit too many to the point where I was kind of like 
just staring at it in my bank like I, I need to get rid of these because I need to actually like do something with this money. Yep. But like four months later, they kind of, you know, go back to like 600-ish K and you're like, oh, okay. That was with mobile, right? That was with Dragon Slayer 2. Oh, okay. That, that, that was like that area for me. Yeah. So sometimes it's good to like buy items knowing their investments. Like there are some like little tricks you can do with, um, if you look at how restores, even though it's not good to do right now because nine herb patches... That mm-hmm. meme, but also just like a lot of drop tables have been changed. Konar and Herblar's in a really weird spot, but um, you could, there was a like, for like a, pretty much ever, you would watch prayer potions and restores. Like prayer potions would go for like from 8.5k up to 10k and then down. Hmm. And you could kind of like look at the graph and see the waves and then you could just like have 10 mil that you're like, this money doesn't exist. Buy them, at, buy them low, and then once they hit high, you just sell them. Yep. Shark. It was it was like that for sharks for a really long time, but once they implemented minnows, it right. messed up everything. And then, like, yeah, there was been some, and they had like a random bot ban, bot wave ban that like messed the prices up for a while, and they went up to like one point two k for a while. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> eventually, it kind of gets shaky, but like, yeah, sometimes it's good to just check the charts, see like the. The patterns and um good thing to do is like look for when streamers are doing events too. Go through like add them on Twitter and then see if they're doing some crazy random events where like players want to show off or just like hang out or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, all right, I'm gonna like buy a bunch of stuff and like you can make a lot of random money just like. So how what stuff like are you talking about like if streamers are gonna go PKing, you flip PKing supplies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's times where like. They'll make announcements of like, oh, doing this stuff, or like back when like Ice Poseidon used to play, mm-hmm. and like eventually once he got clear, like cleaned out on Dead Man mode or something, he would go and him and all like just the RuneScape people that watched him, and he's like, oh, we're gonna go like let's go deep world the guys, and then you like run to the GE and you can sit there and just like make flips as quick as you can, well. sell off certain things, buy certain things, and you could like, cause you know there's people rushing to like I want to go play with. I want to go play with X guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want to go PK with them. Yeah. Even no. things like um when the AGS dropped, do you remember that? Yeah. Went from twenty to like fifteen or something. Right? Yeah, and I ended up buying one. I sat on it for like a month or two. It was like free five mil. It's gone back up, yeah. Like I ended up selling my twenty mil. Nice. Um just random things if you're willing to let, let an item sit, but also it's like if you have like something that you're gonna make like two mil off of, is it worth holding it for six months? Yeah. Because, like, there are tricks, like, buying fire runes. What is it? Buy for, like, five, sell for six. Yeah. I think it was, it's been a while since I've done that. I should know that because I did it for a long time. But you could sit there and just make free money forever. Like, it's super reliable because of Trident and stuff. Fair enough. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, It's not big por- margins, but, like, you can kind of. Yeah, it's easy, easy cash. And yeah. little pro tip, if you're wanting to do, like, high alking or just do something that doesn't involve the trident use lava runes instead of fire runes they're cheaper are they yeah lava runes are cheaper than fire runes let me double check okay so ge saying it's one gp cheaper yeah but let's say two because if you want to buy fire runes right then and there you might want to do it six gp yeah it's typically what you would do so but lava runes are sitting at three so it's a bit cheaper and I think it's because one that you mentioned the f- the trident requires fire runes specifically, mm-hmm. and people do lava runes to get faster rune crafting experience. And they do a lot of lava runes. Like think about those guys that we make fun of, those EHP rune crafting nerds that <laughs> like <laughs> shit digging, coming out swinging. Yeah, I mean, but like, come on, they're they're making like a couple million of them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they're doing it for twelve hours a day. Just making lava runes, just just for you to elk with them, you know. Mm-hmm. So if you want to save a bit of money, some of those combination runes are cheaper than the one single element rune. Mm-hmm. But anyways, as you mentioned, sometimes it's better to sit on an item when you're merching it. I would also agree that as well because if you remember, I bought like 15k bird's nests, sat on them for like four months. And then they kept going down in price from 3.5k all the way down to like 1.5k. I sold them all. I lost like five mil. And then a couple weeks later, they all shot back up to like 4k each because of the birdhouse changes and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I had lost out on a bunch. If I had just held on for another month, 
I would have, but eventually I never thought they were going to go back up. This money is just sitting there and I need it. You know what? This like that this kind of like hey, any any rune like Des listening, you should add a plug and have like a, a flipping portfolio. Were you That's one to- thing I hate about the Grand Exchange history thing. It's like the last 10 f- cells. Mm-hmm. But even then like you just like even if it's like not automated, even if it's just like you type in fire runes, how many did you buy? This many at how much? Blank. Mm. At what date? You know, maybe it just cat- catalogs the date off for you. But you know, and you can have like a portfolio of like how much money you've made or like lost throughout like however long yeah. you're gonna keep track of it. And then and it might put it in perspective to the people like like me when I want an item, I don't care if I put it up ten percent over the value. Because I want it right then and there. Yeah. It might be interesting to see, like, hey, you spent an extra five mil on sharks when you never needed to. Yeah. If you just were a bit more patient. That's why with, um, depending on how, what the price of supplies are, I'll either, like, buy 200 or infamously, when sharks were, like, 500 to 600 GP, I bought, like, like hundreds of thousands. <laughs> I bought, I, I would go and grind, like, Vorkath and Zara, or maybe it was just Vorkath. And dump all my profits into sharks, and I just waited for them to go up, and I made like twenty ish mil. Shit. Well, that's the way to do it. Yeah, but it's super risky, right? Yeah, that's true. But like a lot of it is just like I don't know how we go on this tangent, but a lot of it is like if something's going on in the community that you can make money off of, sometimes it's best to make money off the people that are trying to make money. Yeah. So like I mentioned it before, but when Theater of Blood came out. I went, opened up the like the night before, and this okay, this wasn't exactly my idea, but I got it from me and my raid buddies because we were the ones that were getting people were making going to make money off of us, mm-hmm. which was theater blood's coming out. We need some extra cash for day one just to buy a bunch of supplies before they shoot up in price. So then we were all selling off for supplies, and we're like, man. Dynamite's going for like 30 GP each. What the hell? You know what I mean? Like everything's crashing. And then like light bulb, like gonna open up the wiki. What are all the resources that you get from um Chamber of Xerix? And I just went and put buys at really low prices because I'm like, every raider is gonna sell off everything. Yeah. Those juicy tabs that we all like to collect. Oh yeah. Which that has to be propaganda from like merchanting clans. The savior tabs? Yeah, like Slayer tabs. Like, it has to, you know what I mean? Where it's like, yeah. hey, everyone, let's... It would be really cool if we showed how much we can crash the market by. And then we take screenshots of, like, look at how much this tab was worth, you know? Yeah. Yo, save up from Slayer for, like, two weeks. Post it on Reddit and saying this is my this is what I got from level, I don't know, 80 to 86. Mm-hmm. Get people to start doing this. Yeah. Oh, it's effective though. It's I mean, very, I do it. It's very effective. I find it very satisfying to hold up for a week, yeah. sell off, and you get like seven mil or something. Yeah, yeah. And I made a, I made a lot of money off like planks and stuff and dynamite, dude. I made a ridiculous amount of money off of that. Smart. And it's just like that's why I like RuneScape. And that's why I want. Hey, RuneLight, let's get a portfolio going. <laughs> that's good. That's a good idea. Anyways, um, yeah. I think I kinda, on that, I kind of derailed you there. No, that was it. That was uh. The railroad was leading straight to the news, so let's get right into it. So, we have a nice little Twitch Prime promotion. This is the second one I think we've had. I want to say third. Yeah, second or third. Um, Maybe even fourth, because I know it happened the first time, just like it's happening now. But then the second time, maybe the third time, is when... This is the early access skin. Early access skin. Mm -hmm. Purple skin. Yep. Sly Devils. So this time around, you get a free bond. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, actually, kind of. Yeah. Um. So if you have Twitch Prime or your parents do, um, you know, feel free to... <laughs> parents uh, have Twitch Prime, maybe. Uh, well, Amazon Prime, yeah. which you can use to get Twitch Prime. You'll be able to claim one of, like, the rewards. Yep. And between February the 5th throughout until nine, March of 19th, you get two weeks, 14 days of free membership. Well, free, air quotes, but... So this means you could technically get it twice. How, what do you mean? Because you get you get one... You get a subscribe... You get a free subscription to a Twitch streamer of your choice every month, right? With Amazon Prime? Yep. So since this is going from February to March, 
You could do it in February and March, right? You can get no. It's not how it works. Oh, crap. There's like um on on Twitch. If you have Twitch Prime, there's like a um crown icon on the top of the screen, and you click that, and there's a ton of rewards you get in like a bunch of different games. And then through there, you click it, you claim it, you link your Twitch and all that to your RuneScape account. Um, they have like a support page if you have any issues that will like answer. And yeah, you get get two weeks for free and it gets applied to the account. Yep. So if you have Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime, you may as well jump on this. Yep. It's free membership. And I think you can get a free month of Amazon Prime. That's right. And then you can, it's a one time thing. Same thing with like audibletrial.com slash wild, you know, free month. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then you can just get a free month of Push Prime, and then yeah, through that, get... it's a little bit of legwork. But hey, if you're if you've always been free to play, and you want to try out members, it's perfect. Free free two weeks. Yeah, even it, if you're already a member, you may as well just get yeah. the free fourteen days. Why not? Yeah, or like throw it on an account, just get them to AFK some cannonballs or something, make some AFK money. But don't forget, if you do claim your free month of Amazon Prime, do not forget to unsubscribe from yeah. it because. So many times I've subscribed for that free month and I forgot to do it right away. Or they don't make it super simple to unsubscribe right away. So yeah. you think you did. Three months down the line, you look and you're paying 40 bucks a month for unlimited comic books that you haven't used at all. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Yeah, that'll get you. you yeah, we don't, we don't want to be giving Jeff Bezos any more money. <laughs> okay, off topic. But if you had to guess how much his net worth went up per hour, like, no, I'm, like, we could just say this is how much money he makes every hour, but I mean it's not like cash, but how much you know assets and stuff. Mm-hmm. But let's just say how if you had to guess how much he made per hour, what would you guess? I don't know. He's richer than Bill Gates, richest person right now, richest person in the world. I have no idea. I have throw, no. If you're uh, listening, think of a random number. Okay, that's uh, fifteen point seven million. Really? You think someone's gonna make fifteen point seven million per hour? Maybe. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, well, it's four million. Now it doesn't sound impressive. <laughs> nice. So I have no context to, like, how much money does he have? He could, you could say he has, like, 1,600 quadrillion. And I'd be like, oh. Well, every, for, okay, every time Amazon goes up a percentage in yep. stock, he makes a billion. God damn. Yeah. I always remember that what people would say about Bill Gates is if he dropped a $100 bill... It is more, it's worth, it's, he, he technically, it's like, he loses money stopping to pick it up. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's more worth it well, for not, him to continue walking. But I mean, he's not losing money. It's not efficient. It's if not, he was being paid hourly. If, if he's like, if it's EHP, yeah. like, he wouldn't pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. Put that in perspective, all you Americans that hate, um, what's that, what's that, the girl gamer politician, AOC? AOC? That's uh, that's what everyone calls her on Twitter and stuff. Um, something that, like Gamer Cortez. No, 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 no. I forget what her name is. I don't know politics too well. Wait, this is a gamer girl well, politician? She, like, kind of, yeah. She, at least that's like what her image is. I'm like butchering it super hard. But anyone's super in American politics, but she like has interact with the Twitch community a bit. It's the only reason why I brought her up, and she's like. Wants to have a tax bracket of like for super rich people for like seventy percent, and it's super controversial. It doesn't matter. Um, True. Yeah, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm picturing that classic picture of the girl with the Xbox 360 controller and the headset on. She's like biting on the cord of the headset. Like, do you, like you talking about the super old memes where it's like there's a black border and it's like girl gamers and the white yeah. text and the those motivational type pictures. Yeah, I'm guaranteed. Like, if you type in gamer girl on Google, that's gonna pop up. Yeah, it wasn't the first one. It was actually okay. I just checked it up. Now it's like the tenth one. It was a lot of gamer girls. Oh yeah, dozens. A lot of them play RuneScape. And a lot of them were like, "Haha, can I have some money? Can I have a Rune kite?" Mm-hmm. And then you find out they're actually a boy. Yeah. Type yeah. of all of us. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> let's move on to, to feedback and suggestions. They want to talk about the automation process within the game. So in the suggestions, because like when it comes to quality of month or quality of life month, they, they'll have like a Reddit post or they'll tweet about like, hey, let us know your suggestions. Increasingly, this has always been an issue. I'm not saying it's, hey, mobile kids, but 
it's in, it's very apparent how much more these types of suggestions are, but it's always been an issue where it's like, let's just make things more automated and easier. Yeah. So the example they give is like cleaning grimy herbs or decanting coconut milk into vials. So instead of addressing just aut- random automated processes, they'd like to find as many of these cases where the item could be used on its counterpart to trigger the rest of the inventory. So, and also speed, right? So, in case of, like, cleaning grimy herbs, this would be slower than cleaning them individually, but they do want to make it a automated process. Or, the, no, they don't want to, but they are, like, playing with the idea, because that stuff gets suggested a lot. I don't necessarily see a problem with that, as long as manually clicking is faster. If, it w- if you could somehow automatically, it would be, like... Instant, because you can manually clean an inventory in like two, three seconds, easy. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is similar. To, so if you haven't done blood, blood rune, rune crafting, you got to mine this rune essence block. You get these dense blocks. You got to turn them into dark essence by praying at an altar. Doesn't matter. But then you got to use a chisel on it to turn it into these crystal shards. So what you can do is you can click on it and it will automatically go through your inventory automatically crushing them with your chisel. Takes like 45 seconds to do the full inventory. Yeah. Or you can do it by like clicking it and get it done in 10 seconds. Yeah. Or if you like mouse keys, you have Windows mouse keys like the legal. Yeah. Not AHK. You can get it done in like like two seconds. Like there's, there's like no limit, right? Yeah. So, if cleaning grimy herbs was similar to that... Or even, like, cooking. Like, the speed of, like, cooking. Yeah. You know, like, it was not... I don't want it to be, like... I don't want it to be fast at all. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, automatically cleaning them, if it was still slow enough that... If you wanted to be efficient, you'd click them. Yeah. But at the same time, you could do it if you are kind of AFKing your potion making. Who, who like... I kind of do. <laughs> Uh, you yeah, I don't know. I buy unfinished when I'm training Herblore. I buy the unfinished potions, and I just well see. I I, I, I uh, pass. and I'm not an Iron Man, so I'm not gonna play like one. I choose. The, I I play a little bit like one. Yeah. Feels good sometimes, but uh, yeah, I collect all my herbs, turn them into potions. To me, it feels like free experience mm-hmm. and free potions. Yeah, but yeah, uh, if you guys have any like comments on how you think it should be, because I I don't know like exactly in terms of like, automation, I think it's like. At least for herbs, like, why would you want to automate? Because it's going to be really slow. Or you can sit down for, like, ten minutes and just get your inventory done. Or you can just sell them. Because I think, as I mentioned with the room crafting example, sometimes if I'm in class, I'm not, and I'm, like, paying attention to the teacher or whatever, I'll let it automatically Mm -hmm. go through it. So it takes 45 seconds, but I'm not sitting there, like, clicking hardcore and, like, losing focus to... Yeah, I, I, I've I'm, done the same when I do room crafting, but, like, do people want to bank stand cleaning herbs? That's my main question. It's nice to have the option, I guess. If you're at work or something, and you're not able to sit there and spam through it, like, you can't fully focus so, on there's it. There's so many other, th- like, unless you're, like, an Iron Man, there's so many other things you could be doing that's more AFK and more beneficial. Yeah, but you could be like me, and you're just like, I'm gonna, I got a bunch of, like, five mil worth of these herbs I've been saving up from farming. I'm going to turn them into potions, and I don't feel like selling them and then rebuying them. But even then, you can clean them and then note them, right? You, I mean, you can, yeah, clean them, but let's say I don't want to fully focus on the game. Well, while you're farming? If I'm, let's say I'm at school, and I'm, like, watching the teacher, I'm like, oh, I'll clean all these herbs, click it, boom, let them go through it, hmm, switch it. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'm just not thinking about it properly. Anyways, um, this might be a bit more controversial, but buckets of sand, which, why is it controversial? Because, like, well... I guess we'll that's the second one of the only items that is automatically put into your bank, right? Yep. But also, I, this isn't really too much of the automation process. It's more of how you get buckets of sand in the game. Mm, okay. And this is kind of geared towards more iron men and women, iron people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's been a lot of uh, complaints about the speed it takes to get buckets of sand and it was the same thing with soda ash because like if you're an iron man typically you'd go to charters and you would just buy them yeah so you're competing with other iron men to buy as many like soda ash and stuff so with soda ash they had the giant seaweed stuff the spores mm-hmm. that and you know that 
It's kind of how, you know, that got solved, but now it's Yeah, like, through Fossil Island, was it? Yeah. You can farm in underwater. Yeah. And then now with buckets of sand, that's kind of like the bottleneck between Oh, that's like now the bottleneck for crafting. Okay. Experience like obtaining them enough or getting them fast enough. Typically what people do is they have like a house portal uh their house in uh, you know. Yep. A lot of Iron Men like to go to a PvP world with a bunch of house teleports. They have in their house a Camelot teleport. What they do is they go from their house, leave it, they're at Yunil, they go and there's a, because there's a, a, a sand pile right there, fill up their buckets, and then they'll like teleport, sorry, they'll teleport straight to Camelot and um, not use their house portal, but they have like an actual teleport that they'll, that they'll use. Bank it, because there's, like, a chest right there in PvP Worlds. Mm-hmm. It's, like, 2k an hour. Or they can buy it charters, right? Yep, fair enough. So, they've considered the option, like, a couple options to bring in more sand buckets, like I already said. But the first one is a sandstorm spell, which would be added to the lunar spell book. And this would be locked behind the dream mentor quest. And you'd have a medium level magic requirement, which is, like... Pretty vague. <laughs> that is as vague. They could have just said, it requires magic. Yeah. That's, like, you're... That's, as specific as they're going to get. Yeah, and if it was added, all spells would be altered. Obviously, it would move, you know. Vengeance, the one that no one ever wants to have move because <laughs> they got to relearn muscle memory. <laughs> now they're tell- they're healing other. Yeah. They're healing their opponents by accident. Um, <laughs> We're vengeing them. Yeah. Actually, that's what would happen because Venge yeah. Other is right next to it. Which is sick. Vengeance, I'm going to AG. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Another option would allow players to convert sandstone stone into buckets of sand. This could be done by using a hammer on a sandstone with, with empty buckets in your inventory. You could add buckets of sand to the resources gained from miscellanea. I like how they say, if you like this idea, let us know how many buckets of sand you would expect to gain from each piece of sandstone. Yeah. Like, what? So, a lot of complaints, and I don't know where these numbers came from. Because I saw this on Reddit, and I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I saw people being like, well, if we go with the first option, it's 800k magic experience an hour. And I'm like, that, where are you pulling that? No, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> are you kidding me? But people just like start pulling out random numbers of like, this is how much you'd be getting. And, oh, you go from 2,000, now you're going to get 8,000. Like, maybe there's like something in the Q&A I missed or like a tweet that I missed. This is going to cause the price of law runes and earth runes to go up. We can't have that. And you yeah. just like, is there, am I missing a dev blog here? I mean, for all we know, there was a tweet sent out by JMod giving so much more yeah, detail. Like some random new JMod that I don't know exists yet. Jod Med, you know, <laughs> just tweeting these numbers out. That guy looks familiar. What do you think of these as an idea? Keep in mind, this is very specifically going to affect Iron Man. So yeah, that's how I see it, because I look at it and I go, this isn't going to affect me Player base at doesn't all. care. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unless they do something weird, like have like sandstone as a current, or I mean, um, sand, bucks of sand as a currency in like a new area in the desert or something. <laughs> um, so yeah, on one hand, I don't care because it's not going to affect me. But like, I, just consider like the Iron Man community. So, I mean, Iron Man have been going for what? four years something like that and i haven't really noticed too much complaints about this they've also said and they've gone back on their word on this but they on this stance but jagex had said they don't want to do any updates that are specifically meant to cater towards iron men yeah which it's not true anymore with corp yeah and other things corp i can make an exception to though because if you're killing corp on an iron man i honestly feel like you have played this account enough that your opinion if you're like Jagex people are specifically crashing me and ruining my gameplay after I've dumped like 2000 3000 hours into this account yeah like you know what Th- I'll throw a bone for corp but like for something like this um I'm really like yeah this is like very much them going back on their word again I guess mm. If not with the updates being for Iron Man. But yeah, sorry, go on. No, that being said, if Iron Man are resorting to have to go to a PvP world and do some janky-ass method, 
It's not janky, though. It's pretty common. Yeah, but it just seems weird to, like, oh, if I go to the PvP world, things are work a little bit differently here, so it allows me to... I don't know. It's, it's the same thing with construction, though. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't... Honestly, I don't see a, a big problem with this. It doesn't seem like to be majorly game-changing. Kind of seems like quality of life. It well, makes it, sense. It is game-changing. That's the thing. I don't see it as, like, a huge... Like, to a huge extent. It In the way that they're proposing it, to me, makes sense. Whether you're using sandstones or this new spell, it seems like it would fit. So, the, the new spell, to my understanding, would work... It would have the same... When I say my understanding, let me be very, very clear. This is going off, like, heavy assumptions. Mm-hmm. But it's going to go with, like, how you can water saplings, like like tree saplings with the Lunar spell book, where you pull out an inventory, cast a spell, and then you just bank them. Like, it's a quick process. See, I'm picturing it to be, like, flax to bowstring spell, where that you do five at a time per cast. Okay, well, even, even if you're doing five at a time per cast, it's still very game-changing. It seems like a bit of a quality of life thing to me, though. I imagine an Iron Man, it's like pain in the ass to have to go world hop and buying it, hoping that no other Iron Men are also buying them from the charter ships, or you're going to these PvP worlds and hoping no one's griefing there. I have never done that with my friends. <laughs> never. Never have I ever DDS back someone. They all drop F-bombs on me, and I go, ha, that dude had 1k laws, what an idiot. When he had like three, and he comes back and starts... You know, talking smack. And I'm like, thanks for the free 1K laws. And now he's getting flamed. And he's like, I swear I didn't bring them that many laws. <laughs> and everyone's like, why Why are you bringing 1K laws? It does sound like that, like that very specific scenario has never happened. No, that's definitely <laughs> has never. I've definitely not spent hours only for them to bring <laughs> like a Max Maiden Ancestral. And then like we're running around door jamming and like. Because there's like a little house. Um, maybe there might be. This this is hypothetical, but you can open up the door and then it's <laughs> it, it stops the pathway because it there's like a fence and there's only like a one square gap. So you can sit there and spam close it and watch their main go back and forth between two <laughs> squares. They try and cast ice barrage on you and then you just tell you out and do it again. Or you try and counter rush him and now he's too scared to log onto his main. Yes, endless scenarios in this made up. Yeah, this made-up world, because I don't know if that would consider me being a toxic player if I were to do that, (laughs) but... People are angrily typing on their keyboards right now. Yeah, those mechanical keyboards are going to have a couple broken buttons. (laughs) Especially the F. I'm going to iTunes with this. Yeah. One star. So, like, the main thing is that crafting and hunter are really important skills to keep in mind. If you're making an update just for Iron Man, yeah, not in general, just for Iron, because this is like we're like I don't know if you're fair with saying that like these two ideas are just for Iron Man. Like it's like who's gonna um, three tick um, granite and then like hammer the the stuff in their inventory to stone. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's weird. The main thing is that crafting super important. For getting your first glory, or you can, like, there's two ways to get your first glory. One is Hunter, and you go and catch Dragon Implings and all that stuff, and you get a glory. Or you craft one. Yep. That's why um, the Fossil Island Demi Boss was super controversial on release, because it dropped glories, and it completely ruined that grind for Iron Man. Yeah, so they took it off. Yeah, and so it's really important to keep in mind that, like, big staples of the game, I guess, for certain accounts like one of the routes would be completely changed and like crafting as a like the would it would kind of change the whole meta between getting your jewelry as iron man because typically you it's super nice because you you heat up you get your molten glass which you can get some nice experience from but then you make air orbs and then you charge them and Mm. then you put them on battle staves and then you elk them it's a full circle so yeah before it was annoying to get both soda ash and buckets Mm-hmm. Then they made Soda Ash a little bit easier. Everyone's like, yeah, that's cool. Because, hey, now we just have to focus on buckets, and now it's good to go to like a, a shop and buy 10,000 buckets of sand and then do this method of like the POH stuff, right? Yeah. And so people are like, yeah, that's fine. It just takes a lot of buying and like the pain of world hopping. We're good. And then they, if they change it again, the next bottleneck is Battle Staves, which is locked behind. Like, speeding it up is locked behind... Diaries, 
the Varrock Diaries, and then farming level, because with yep. the battle staff. Celestra. Yeah, the Celestra seeds. So, like, it, it becomes this weird thing where, like, it's also a source of how you make your money, too, right? Because you can elk once you finish making your stats. But it kind of, like, it, it's slowly really changing the meta. I don't even care what the experience per hour, but it's completely changing, like, how an Iron Man should function. It's, like, really speeding up the accounts. I would like to hear the opinion from Iron Men who have already completed this grind. Completed and midway through. I want to hear all that. Yeah, like. Because if someone who's completed already, they might look back and go, no, it fucking sucks having to do it. It's stupid. Or they might go, it's really not that bad. I did it. It, it shouldn't be changed. If it does suck, like, why does it suck, though? Is it because it just takes a long time? Because that is, like, that's the whole point of an Iron Man. Yeah. That's the, the, the uh, off. like, people look at it like me. I say, that's awful. Like, how much time do I have to spend getting supplies? But people that are invested are like, look how much, like, effort and, like, planning I got into getting 85 crafting or I have 99 crafting. Like, that is a big achievement because now I can teleport to the crafting guild. But, like, it shows, like, my dedication to, like, being efficient in terms of, like, uh, routing how I'm going to be training my, like, skills as I'm playing Mm. and getting my supplies but if it becomes easy, then it's like, well, yeah, yeah, it's def- yeah, definitely want to hear what other people think about that change. Yep. Yeah. Um. But yeah, D- doesn't affect us. So do you want to want to move on? Yeah. Well, yeah, we got a lot of cute quality of life stuff to go over. So who knows? Maybe there's gonna be some more of these changes. I mean, last week was combat. I don't really think we talked about that. But like, they ended up buffing the Serp Helm. And stuff like that. It's now like plus five strength. So let's, should we quickly go over the polls? Because I, I don't... The last two episodes were a little bit jumbled together. And I can't recall if we went through these polls. So let me just jump on, actually. Oh, well, we'll quickly go through it. Because they had... Should the defense requirement found on blessed forms of dehyde chaps be removed? Currently, they require 40 defense. Whereas black, de- black dehyde chaps don't require any defense. So this is a buff for... Pures? A huge buff, I should say. It's a really big buff. And really the only difference between the two are you get prayer bonus from the Blessed Dehyde, but it also acts as a god piece of armor in the God Wars dungeon, more specifically directed to the one that's in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So that one did not pass. It was very, very close. 74.9% said yes. So it's point mm-hmm. one percent off from passing. Yeah, but did not pass. Good. <laughs> Next one was same question, but related to the van braces. Also didn't pass at seventy four point two percent. The next one was should the player automatically stop attacking Vorkath when frozen by his special attack? Did not pass. It was pretty close to fifty fifty on that one. That one, I'm not entirely surprised that it didn't pass, I guess. It makes the fight a little bit easier, I guess. So Vor- Vorkath didn't pass, right? Nope, did not. It was pretty 50-50. Yeah, um, okay. And then question four, should Entangle, Snare, and Bind durations be unaffected by Protect from Magic? Did not pass. Protect from Magic halves the duration? Yeah, so yeah. they wanted to remove that? They wanted to, like, yeah, pretty much buff the normal spell book. I voted yes, because I thought, I mean, this, the normal spellbook seems pretty weak compared to Ancients in a lot of ways. So I thought I voted yes, because I was like, you know, it'd be nice to bring, especially in free-to-play or something. Well, you can only use the, the crappy one, the snare. Yeah, so. But. It's something. Fire Surge is really strong. And, like, I don't know if it's a nerf. I don't know if it didn't pass or whatever because of rushing. True. But I have no idea, right? Yeah, you are bringing a minimum two extra runes for these. Nature runes, and then you need waters and earths, but you can get it combined. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it didn't pass. It is a buff to PvP, so I can kind of understand why. Yeah, that alone. It tends to happen where then there's a pull question that's affecting PvP and might make it PvP players stronger. Mm -hmm. It usually doesn't pass. It makes the attackers more effective and the, the defenders... It takes it like, okay, if I actually want to try and build a really strong argument, it's that it just buffs people who are on the offensive and it gives less counterplay to people on the defensive of like, 
I hit the right prayer timing. Yeah. Like, I'm praying the right, I'm doing everything right. Let's roll the dice. Actually, I have some dice right here. It hit me. And now, <laughs> like, I ha- whatever. Okay. I Now I'm binded in place for a bit longer. Yeah. And PVMers do outweigh PVPers. And there comes these arguments where it's like, PVMers vote out of spite. Not always the case. Sometimes is the case, though. If it opens the skill gap, the skill ceiling, I'm usually down for it. But it's kind of... <laughs> yeah. I don't want to lose my spades. Anyways, question five. Should players be able to upgrade the range and max cape to match the ammo pickup effects of the assembler? This would require using Vorkath's head on the cape and would not include the additional bonuses. So right now, you don't see a lot of people using the range cape because it doesn't... The the assembler you get from Vorkath is better yeah. stat wise or offensive stat wise, and it picks up what is it? Uh, well, I mean, it, it picks all, up better. It either picks them up or they just don't like they they do like either they get destroyed on use or you pick them up. There's yeah. no actual drop rate, but with the range cape, you're pretty much using it for the defensive and prayer bonuses. Mm-hmm. But you'll still leave a small handful on the ground. That one did pass. Yep, which Pe- is weird because they said they'd never. Put this as a bolt. But yeah, because I think they don't want people. They don't want the max capes and the max uh, skill cape to be better than like everything else. Because then now we want higher rates. Mm, yeah. We all want a max cape now. Then we go down. RuneScape threes are out. You know, but it did pass. Uh, next yep. question is: Should it be possible to sacrifice a Slayer trophy heads on the Dark Altar for a two point five k prayer experience? Vorkath's head, due to its more common drop rate, would award 1,000 experience. That one did pass. Dope. I think it's really cool. Yeah. I really like because, first of all, if you like to grind Vorkath, you're going to have like 50 in my bank. Well, like 20. But I also have two Kurask heads. Yeah. What are you going to do with that? Yeah. You mount it in your player owned house once, if even that. Now let's add fishing. I want to. I want to use a. I want to fight a big shark. <laughs> yeah, that big old shark. Next question: Should the strength bonus offered by the serpentine helmet be increased to point plus five? Currently, it is plus three. So, I, if I'm not mistaken, it was plus five for yep. a while on release. It they was brought it down to plus three, which made the Nate is not helmet better. Mm-hmm. But they also reduced a bunch of its effects, where you would get venomed just from attacking someone with the helmet. Yeah. So they took that off, too. Even if you're hitting zeros. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I think this is okay, because Serpentine Helmet's pretty cool. It offers good defense bonuses, and it's supposed to be, like, an endgame helmet, currently. So... Yeah, no, people only used it so you couldn't get poisoned or venomed. Yeah, or if you wanted defense. Yeah. Uh, you think, like, you, like, you do lose like, some offensive stats, like, for terms of ranging and maging. Like, yeah, true. I would bring it to Vorkath only because I'm too lazy to use antidotes. Fair enough. Straight up. That was the only reason why. And I'll still only use the Serp Helm for that because I just cannot be asked to to get poisoned. So, I can understand why it passed, though. Yep. Now you have more of a choice when it comes to busting out your your best-in-slot helmet. Mm Mm-hmm. Next question was, should weapon categories remember the previous attack styles being used when equipped? For example, if a player used any sword previously with the defensive attack style, any other sword will continue to be used with the defensive style when equipped. It passed. I, I love this. Yep. I'm so sick of having to use... Long ranged on my trident for whatever reason, switching over to something else and being on defensive or whatever it is. So for me, depending, well, I like, like now that I have the dragon hunter lance and I'm do, when I do group raids, I like to be the guy on melee hand because I get a flex on Ohm's hand with my hunter lance. Hell yeah! And I prefer to be on accurate if I'm stabbing it, but once I break it and I want to mage. The mage hand, I'd have to go to defensive when I swap to my trident. Yeah, long range. Yeah, because I don't want because you get to stand in the right spot when you do that. Um, so it's nice that like you can now, and I guess for like pures and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think a big one that I noticed this with the most was Cerberus. He's weak to crush. So if I have my 
SGS and all that? My SGS is with me, but I'm also using the the bludgeon. Mm-hmm. Bludgeon has three attack styles, whereas SGS has four attack styles. One of the only one of them is crushed. Crush. And since he's weak to crush, if I want to spec, what I have to remember is to switch the attack style of the sword because you will never be on the crush setting. Yeah. Just because there's three it's it's weird, but when you're switching over from a weapon that has three attack styles to four attack styles, you can't have them sync up completely, depending on... Yeah. It, I'm probably not explaining it properly, but you might understand what I'm getting at. Anyways, glad to see this is a thing. Next one, question nine. If the question above fails, should we instead add an attack style to Din's bulwark only to make the combat buttons more convenient when switching? That one also passed. Question ten, should it auto it cast... Should autocast options be remembered when equipping a magical weapon? Each autocast configuration layout will be remembered separately. Separately. Magical weapons which share the same layout will share the the spells remembered. Will share the spell remembered. For example, the Staff of Light and the Staff of the Dead share the same autocast configuration layout and would in turn share which spell is remembered. This would only be for non-PvP areas. Blech. That was a mouthful. Yeah. It's nice for barraging tasks, maybe, but you're better off doing it manually, because I think you, when you're auto-casting, you lose, like, a tick, I yeah, believe. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Even, that's what I heard about having this in PvP, was if you're a seasoned PvPer, you're still going to want to manually do it yep. to be as effective as possible. Yep. Yeah, that did pass. And last question, should a notice board be added to pest control which shows the amount of personal wins for novice, intermediate, and veteran landers? Which did pass. Yeah, it's kind of cool, I guess. More info. Yeah. More uh, screenshots to go on the subreddit. Hell yeah. Yeah. Anyways, now on to what questions we have to vote for this week, which is skilling. So question one, should the Ring of Forging be made available and free to play? The ring is currently rarely used in members, but could be useful for free-to-play players. If this passes, Murky Matt, the Grand Exchange, will ex- enchant ruby rings for free uh, for free players at <laughs> the cost of 250 GP per ring. Yeah, I read that too, and I was like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, sure. It's a ring that, yeah, is not really going to get used in members unless someone's just mm, doesn't have the knowledge for RuneScape, right? Like, who's making iron bars? Well, I don't know. Maybe lower levels. Things like this, which like a free item for free-to-play players, I'm always like okay with. Cause yeah, I don't really see anything different from this. I don't I don't even know why there'd be like a cost. Yeah, that's the weird it. one. Why don't you just enchant it yourself? Why do you have to? Why do you have well, to pay? They, probably because you're not going to be able to because Cosmic Rune? No. No, because you can, you can enchant like Strength Amulets, no? I don't think so. Pretty sure. I want to say uh, cosmic runes. No, you can I, get it. How do I know? How do I not know that? You can get them from uh, Hill Giants, if I'm not mistaken. I remember being no, in No, yeah, the, you're right. I don't know why I'm thinking. I think the reason I'm why. Super, this is like turning my brain to mush. Why I think, is this a thing? I think it's because engine work. They can't make it so you can only enchant one type of ring. Either every ring is enchantable for non members, or mm. you have to pay someone else. Because it's weird that you wouldn't be able to have Ring of Recoils or Ring of Dueling or the Ring of Life. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's a good point. I think that's the reason why. Why did I, th- why did I think Cause for f- members only for a minute? Huh, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good reason. That totally makes sense. As sad as it is, but yeah. that's what Jagex says. But yeah, okay. So should Jugs and... Poll question two. Should Jugs and Vials drop in Winter Todd and Blast Furnace area vanish? Rather than appearing on the ground and they get in the way of other people's clicks. Regardless of the outcome of this question, items dropped there manually will never appear to anyone except their owner. Yeah. The main thing is, um, do you want auto smash and auto deleting jugs after X amount of time or maybe instantly in these areas? Hmm. So. Because they do get in the way if you're doing like. Yeah, so I'm just confused. So if you're not. Currently using wines, this doesn't matter to you. It's only if you do use wines and you drop it, it'll disappear right away. Yeah. I mean, some, some people just might use brews, but stam potions. Yeah. They, hey, uh, auto smash vials a thing, but, you know, whatever. People will probably bring, yeah, brews and stuff to Winter Todd. 
Yeah, Some I mean, people, maybe. sure, it's kind of annoying clicking on other people's things, but it doesn't matter. It's gonna that's gonna get changed anyways. Yeah, um, I can't wait for the bugs where somebody else drops like an SGS by accident and that disappears. Yeah, you smash the vial like a barbarian would. <laughs> no. There goes your SGS. <laughs> All right, uh, poll question three: Should there be a visual indicator that the Hespori plant is fully grown at the farming guild? This would allow players to see the status of the Hespori plant without entering the cave. Yeah, of course. Sure. Why Why do you... Ha- I don't know. Make it a bit convenient. Help the Facebook players. Hell yeah. Um, poll question four. Should the amount of volcanic ash mined from each action be increased um, an extra one per 15 mining levels? You have above the requirement, and they put 22 with question a question mark. mark. So at 37, you would receive two volcanic ash, and at and three at 52 and six to like 97. Who the fuck is writing this question Dude, out? I'm like having like a stroke because I'm trying to like sift through this, but pretty much. I miss Mataiza. I'm pretty sure he was the one typing all this out yeah. before. It's the British man. I tell you, they don't want to speak English. <laughs> Those keyboards are getting smashed so hard right now. They're like going to Google Translate from like British to English, and like this is just kind of what's being spit out. These awful, like, worded... But yeah, pretty much, the higher your mining level at certain thresholds, you would get more volcanic ash if you're mining it. I'm assuming the only people that do this is Iron Man. Who does it manually? I I buy mine. Yeah. I don't know. This question confused me. That's a no vote for me. I'm just going to pass it. Yeah, it's a hard no. Making me feel dumb. Skip. (laughs) Poll question five. Should wyverns found on Fossil Island drop volcanic ash as an uncommon drop? This would be 100 on average for ancient, 40 for long-tailed, spitting, and taloned. Sure. I I don't know how much they go for, but whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Poll question six. Should it be possible to refill Greycaller's can? Is that how you say it? I haven't seen this word in... Greycaller's? Whatever. Using standard water sources... The can is rewarded from Teeth uh, Farm minigame, holds a thousand quote-unquote charges of water, and currently requires 20 points to refill it from empty. What? It costs points to fill it up? Yeah. That's a dead item if I've ever seen one. Um, well, with Humidify being a thing, it's a dead item. Yeah. So. I mean, who the hell waters anything? I don't. I do. I forgot you could water things, and I'm like... Half my stuff just doesn't die because of the ultra compost, so I don't know. What the hell does watering do? I don't know. It makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I typically do farm runs, so... I mean, herb runs, so I don't really have to humidify, but, you know. Yeah. I actually remember hearing or seeing on the subreddit or something that the water can might be a good item to take away from that and add it to the farming guild or add it to the Hespori mm-hmm. thing, similar to the bottomless bucket. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Teeth farming sucks. Okay, so we had some questions with the sandstone thing. Like, where the hell are these rates be co- being like brought up from? But, pull question seven. Should st- should sandstone be able to be used in place of buckets of sand? Similar to how seaweed may be used in place of soda ash when a player casts the lunar spell super glass make. Ten kilogram chunks would act as 18 buckets. Five is nine. Two is four. One is two buckets. That makes a lot of sense with these random experience rates <laughs> and buckets per hour. We should measure everything by buckets per hour from here on out. But, like, that is that that should not be, like, that's huge game changer. It also is down below it, NB. We got to figure out what that acronym stands for. The above is intentionally balanced so that one kilograms and two kilogram pieces of sandstone produce more buckets of sand per unit of weight than heavier buckets heavier blocks this is to reward players with slightly more sand from chiseling down the larger pieces some still that is not um i will talk about afterwards though the general idea um anyways Poll question eight, should the skill, let me say that again, poll question eight, should this the prayer skill guide be updated to show the relevant prayer icons alongside with the associated prayer? It currently displays a generic Ceridoan symbol, so when you actually oh. do your levels, you click your prayer, it would show like Rager next instead of just like a, the default star that you get over when you look at the prayer skill. Yeah, uh, sure. Yep. 
And should the skill guide be updated to show the relevant spell icons alongside the associated spell? Regular, Ancient, Lunar, and Arceus, they currently display more generic symbols. And Same question, but for magic. Yep. So mm. They also make a little side note that the Slayer skill guide was also like raised by players, potentially needing a change like the ones we just mentioned. But due to the size of the Slayer Master chat heads... These would be more of a prob- more problematic to fit into the skill guide itself, so they won't be pulling that. And by the way, NB stands for Nota Bene, which means note well. It's a Latin term. We've got some smart scholars over there at well, Jagex HQ. Maybe they should spend less time Googling random acronyms and more time look- making these poll questions make a bit more sense. Maybe the guy speaks fluent Latin, but can't... And they have to translate from Latin. Yeah. Old Latin. He's like the English. last guy surviving who was raised with Latin. Yeah. Conversational Latin. But yeah, poll question 10. Should unfinished torsal vials be able to be used in place of clean torsal vials when making super combat potions? No creatures drop these items, and the potion created from the unfinished vial is rarely created by players. You make them by accident. That's how you make them. Please change this, because I have a bunch of these vials sitting in my bank that I was like, fuck, messed up. Yeah. There's a couple hundred K there. So I'll just be going through making unfinished potions with all my herbs, because I do it the Iron Man way, mm-hmm. by the way. And the torsos are next to all of them, and I end up, I keep, I just accidentally make them. Nice. That's a money sink. Yeah. But yeah, um, pull question 11. Should enchant jewelry spells once the relevant action has started be automated? The enchanting will only automate for the item that was originally selected to be enchanted. So if you select a sapphire ring, only sapphire rings will be enchanted over time. This would be the same way as bones on an altar, where manually doing it would remain would be faster. I think they need to do this. I think this should have just been put in, to be honest. Yeah. Because enchanting jewelry not on a, a third-party client is so annoying. Yeah, that's true. You lose track of what ones you've enchanted. Yeah, and it's gone to the point where like now they have certain jewelries that look different in your inventory, so you can actually tell which ones are and aren't enchanted. Where they could have just like like they they have these really weird workarounds, like but then like they have to go back. Like, it makes it so that like when you're enchanting stuff, at least for Jagex, if they added this, it gives them a lot less work they have to do in the future. Yeah, sure. Quality of life right there. Yep. Should splitting coconuts once the action has started be automated? Same way as bones to alter. Why do you split coconuts? Milk. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of went over that, yeah. Yeah, should pouring coconut milk into empty vials be automated? Same mm. thing, bones alter concept. Should filling water in cans be automated? Bones alter, that type of stuff. <laughs> A lot of the How many watering cans do people have? I, I have three by accident, and I'm sick when I, it pisses me off when I accidentally use one. Even though I just said earlier I never water anything, but they end up taking like three inventory or three bank spaces, and I'm like, I don't use any of these. Well, before when I did farming without humidify, I would bring like, depending on what runs I was doing, like two or two or three watering cans because you run out, right? You do your allotment, your flowers, true, go on to the next one, like at lower levels. And there's only, what, like, six or whatever, or nine, whatever, however many there are, eight, 20, there's, like, 50 you're charges, like... Losing me. Yeah, eventually you run out, but then you want to do it, or, like, at least I would plan it out, so I'd use my ectophile, finish up, and then fill up with that pump, and then go on to my next allotments. Yeah, yeah. I, like, routes for that, but once you humidify, it's... Who the hell does their allotments anymore? <laughs> exactly, right? And then the last one, should creating Serum 207s once the action has started be automated? This one is actually different because a more relevant example of this exists for Herblore, in particular the creation of anti-venoms. And I know people, you can make money, or at least at one point, you can make money doing Serum 207 through Herblore hmm. because it's such a pain in the ass to make. What it's does it a- do? Do you know off the top of your head? I completely forget. All right, let's go to the wiki. I I want to say it's like a component for um, anti venoms or something, or like one of the sand fuse. Oh no, serum two hundred sevens are for um for swampletics. Yeah, for swampletics. <laughs> um, what do they call it? It's Unafflicted. For, uh, yeah, it's for Morton, the afflicted uh, villagers. 
Yeah, okay. What am I think? Is it Serum 207s I'm still thinking of? I know there's one potion. Maybe they changed it so a while For disease? Ago. Cures disease? Maybe. Something's I don't know. bomb? I, I don't know. There is one potion you could make that people would make to make money because it was such a pain in the ass. Relicium's bomb? Balm? I, I totally don't remember. I'm, I'm trying to like think of what it was when I was getting 90 herbal orcs. I was considering doing that. It's like over a year ago. Hmm. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's it for the... Um, so I guess if it's a buff to Swamp Latix, then no. <laughs> <laughs> I want this series to go on as long as possible. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. X marks the spot. This one's a doozy. What is this? This is a new quest that we talked about a little bit ago that got put into the game. Yeah, it's for the free-to-play players to go check out Zaya. Yep. So, feel free to hit us with that intro lore. Oh. One of the residents of Lumbridge who lives across from the general store has converted their house into the new Sheared Rom pub. In the pub, you'll find the mysterious Vios, who is looking for bold adventurers' help to find some treasures. You heard it. Mm -hmm. We now have a pub in Lumbridge, but X marks the spot as a short novice free-to-play quest aimed at players just starting out with other quests such as Sheep Shearers and Cook's Assistant. This is designed to give the Kingdom of Kren ties to the mainland. Additionally, Vyasa's boat that takes players to the Great Kren has been moved to a small dock in Draenor Village, making, making it easier to access and distinguishable from the ships at Port Sarum. And there, right there, is the controversy of the week. We need like a whoop, 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 whoop. Controversy alert. Controversy <laughs> alert. Like, because we, it seems to happen every month. We definitely need like an epic sound bite. Yeah. Send us your suggestions. Yeah. So the <laughs> controversy behind it. this is that they changed um, major areas. Well, yeah, kind of. Well, yeah. We'll, st- we'll start off on the weaker one, which is the pub. Yeah. Some people did not like that there was a new building in Lumbridge. It's small, though. I mean, there it used to be a house. They converted to a pub. Yeah, the, the person what's who owned the, the house. What's just, the lore behind it? Maybe you'll find out there at the quest. I have no idea. Yeah, maybe the guy was like... The woman. The woman. She w- lived there. Yeah, she lived there, and she's like, I'm sick of milking the cows across the river, although I'm making great money off of it. Let's. I, I but wa- people sneak into my house, kill me, and pickpocket me. That's true. So I want to own my own bar. Mm-hmm. And she does, and it turns out to be just like Cheers. You walk in, Vios is there, and sometimes the Duke walks in, and everyone's like, hey, it's Dills. And they all get happy to see you. And then you put on Redemption. You say, unpulled changes, Jagex, ruining the game. Hasta la vista. And you, you start riding in there. Yep. And, uh... Next thing she knows, it's like, well, it's like a double-edged sword. This happened in a restaurant in Toronto. There was this, like, new butcher restaurant that popped up, and all these vegans were protesting outside of it, yeah. all pissed off, which and it caused them to get a lot of publicity. And I remember listening to the CBC. They were interviewing him, and he was like, business is booming because of these people. Yeah. Like, People are coming to check out this restaurant because of these protests. I've tripled my cows per hour killing. <laughs> yeah. You know how much strength experience I'm getting from this? <laughs> I have to kill them in store. Yeah. It's actually more efficient to kill them on the way to the store outside in front of the protest. <laughs> <laughs> and more protesters show up, which yeah. means it's just works out. Anyways, that's happening to the lady here. Mm-hmm. So she has her pub. But people are not having it. They're sitting there thinking, like, this is... This is not how life works. I, I don't know what they're saying. People are just unhappy with it. I got nothing. But so, the bigger controversy is the dock at Draenor, which I can understand, but I I want I think I know what Jagex's reasoning behind all this is. But um it's, It does look a little stupid. It be- looks awful. It definitely looks like assets, dock one, drag it there, and then asset, ship three, little ship three, put it, you know what I mean? It looks like it was very quickly implemented, where like the bar, the sizing, it's like, yeah, it's it's a little lumbridge, you know? Um, We, like, it's kind of cool, lumbridge is a bar now, you don't need like a house next to a river across from the generals, like... You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. the bar fits the area, and it looks nice. 
but the dock doesn't. It's it's in a really weird spot. Yeah, and it does change the look of Draenor a bit. I th- like at least me personally. When I go to Draenor, it was all, it's a small village, and sometimes you forget that it's right on the ocean because it kind of looks like more of a pond. Mm-hmm. So then having this giant ship docked there. It throws off your perspective a little bit. I can I can get why it looks why people are upset about it. In a it. world building aspect, it shouldn't. I don't think willows would be growing next to an ocean. Yeah, that salt water would probably kill them. Yeah. Um. But I'm not really. What is it? A botanist? So what do I know? Arborist for ar- trees. Ar- arborist. There we go. Or horticulture for plants in general. Perfect. Yeah. I have a friend who's an arborist and another friend who does hort- horticulture. That's why I know those words. <laughs> and they hate each other. Yeah. Well, they don't know each other, but they they would if they met each other. Anyways. <laughs> um, it. I mean, it makes more Like, Port Serum's a huge docking port. I mean, it's in the name. Yeah, port. It's a port. But it has, like, that's where all the ships are. That's, like, the main hub for the mainland of Gilinor, right? Even more so than, like, Catherby. Yeah, I mean, I would actually argue that where Vios was in the port was a bad place. Yeah, it was very hard to find. Um, like you didn't know it was there unless you wikied it. I thought it would have been more effective if it was near the bar. Yeah, so that that's not even that far of a shift from where Draenor is. You literally move it like 10 tiles, mm-hmm. whatever direction towards the bar. I could be wrong because I've taken the boat once. But Corsair Cove, that boat is near the bar too, right? Yeah. I have no idea. I did it once for the quest, and I just used my my mythic, te- my, my cape teleporter. Yep. Like, I don't go to Corsair Cove. Yeah, exactly. Um, it would have made more sense in general, like, from day one, to not have Vios next to, like, pest control pretty much, that boat. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of cool to see ports on this bustling port where all these different boats from all around the world yeah. gather, right? You got one that goes to Entrana, you have one that goes to Zaya, and then you have one that goes to Pest Control, and one that goes to Kramja. Mm-hmm. You know, you got everything, right? You got the boat you make with, in Dragon Slayer 1, yep. that little air with Ned and all that. Um, yeah, like, I don't know. It, it, it was neat, and it's kind of weird that they just like moved it. They um, want to make it more obvious to new players. I get it. You know, you go to Draenor Village, there's a one boat there versus Port Serum that has, like, 20 of them, and you can get confused. You might just, like, there's too many boats here, I don't give a shit about this guy, but I can see them changing it. I wouldn't be surprised in a few weeks from now they move it to Port Serum. Yeah, just, like, put it in, like, a better spot, because the old spot wasn't even good. Too tucked away. Yeah. Um, and I, if I'm not mistaken, it show, like it basically didn't make sense, because... The boat for uh, pest control was like blocked in, or there was like a boat that couldn't get out unless Vias's boat moved. Yeah, something like that. I guess the the controversy was that obviously they didn't pull these like changes to the land, but like but they never really pull these. Like they add the quest in, they kind of just do these. This one was just a poor design. Yeah. So my main thing is the only reason why I can think of it being not a big deal is that. With the influx of new players that have obviously stayed around, because, like, look at the mobile... Like, look at our player base, right? We still have great numbers. If you look at search-related things for RuneScape, comparing to other MMOs, uh, like, RuneScape is, like, is way more popular than we actually all... Like, I still think of RuneScape as, like, a 20k peak game. Like, I still remember playing it when it was at 20k peak. And, like, if you compare it to games like WoW, if you go through the Google Trends, and you do, like, RuneScape OSRS versus, like, WoW and World of Warcraft, there are variables. Like, WoW is, like, a there's a WoW flight comp company, and there's, like, another company called WoW as well. Right, yeah, So yeah. those will get, met, like, mush into WoW. But if you even do, like, Warcraft and all this stuff, like, RuneScape is, like, a very close competitor in terms of, like, searches. And for some points... They will be like the trans RuneScape will be more popular. Mm-hmm. Like RuneScape is like a very bustling, booming game. Arguably, top. I mean, I would say it's the top five biggest MMOs right now. I would say like even like maybe even top three. Yeah, like I'm a bit more ignorant because what Rune, and RuneScape does this, or Jagex does this weird thing where they display what their actual numbers are. No other MMO company does that because that can be detrimental to their to their. Uh, Mm-hmm. I don't know how players see the game, right? Yeah. Take out, like, okay, people bought the game meme, but, like, 
WoW is a big problem with botting too. Like all these MMOs have big problems with bots. It's just that RuneScape's kind of known for it and they're more open about it. But the main thing is that like the game isn't what it was three, four years ago when it was like dead. Like, yeah. I remember logging on and like the 20K players are playing, right? And those yeah. people are playing because of nostalgia. Nowadays with so many people playing, like a, a good chunk of players click that I'm a first time player when they go on Tutorial Island mm-hmm. and Jagex has that NPC there to like catalog the percentage of players that are active that are new to the game and how much are coming in each day that aren't getting banned by like, you know, there's the tons couple days. But yeah, there's a lot of people that play the game, not even for nostalgia, just because it's like an actually like a good game. It is, especially with mobile now. Tons of people in the CC that are like, oh, I'm only playing because of mobile. I don't have a computer. In or, terms of yeah. like what games offer, like a lot of people are super upset with like, I'm going to use WoW as an example, but they strayed from their basic game design. They, they did like an interview in like 2005 on why they did certain class designs and why games work, like dungeons and stuff, why everything works in a certain way. And there's an interview that me and my buddies, like, read. Just, like, one night we were just, like, chilling and talking about it. And they went back on, like, almost everything at one point. If you're, like, a super, like, old school, like, Vanilla WoW and stuff and Burning Crusade. They talked about why mages didn't have a fro- or water elemental in the beginning. They do now. They talked about why hunters had mana instead of focus, but hunters have focus now. They talked about, like, the dungeon system and why it's so slow and tedious and hard. Now it's fast and brainless and... Mm-hmm. Whatever, and a lot of people in general are like actually leaving MMOs to come play RuneScape because RuneScape is like, like pretty. Like it's very true to like what an MMO should be. Not just that, just the way the Jag- like OSRS team handles things. Mm-hmm. Like, like you look, look like oh, like old school compared to RS three, right? Like RS three went the route of every other MMO where everything is streamlined and sped up, and it like they they stray too far from like. The, um, I don't know. What's the phrase? I don't know. Just Some, like their principles or whatever. The the essence of RuneScape, for lack of a better word. Yeah, I don't know. They stray too far from the crowd or the whatever. The yeah, thing that the, made RuneScape stand out is no longer the case for RuneScape 3. Yeah. It's but, like every other game. Yeah. I mean, if you go and like, it's kind of a meme, but like, look at like, if you ever see like streamers. I don't know what game to play. I kind of want to play a game. Someone might be making a joke or being serious, but old school is like often suggested. You'll see it pop up everywhere. Yeah, like like it's very popular. I'm only going on this tangent because if so many new players are playing, they don't have the same nostalgia that we have. Where yeah. it's like, I remember when I was a kid, it's like they don't care. Yeah. They they go, actually, this pub, people are okay with the pub because it does look really like I think it looks really nice. Yeah, Lumbridge needs a pub. It's a city. Yeah, I think it looks better than the house that was just there, just to take up space. The dock, it just wasn't implemented correctly at all, and it doesn't fit the aesthetics of Draenor Village. Yep. Um, That's the main, my main comments on that, but... Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to see Get Moved. Yeah. So, yeah, that's summing up everything like that quickly. And then we'll move on to the Cabos Lowlands post changes. And, um, yeah, it's pretty neat. So the Hydra Head, so the Alchemical Hydra, um, got a Hydra Head added to the loot table. You can mount it in your skill hall POH for 82 construction, where you get 1k or like 1.1k construction, and then 200 experience, attack strength, defense, magic, and range. Similar to all heads, you can mount this one now. Um, you can also make the Hydra helmet, the recolor of uh, Slayer Helm. Yep. Looks cool. Yeah, it looks cool. It finally something that I think matches Bandos a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Better than, uh, yeah, having to mix and Be- match with before your... Before it was like the Abyssal helmet was the best one. Or the KVD. But the Abyssal helmet works mm-hmm. because you have a Lava Cape, Primordial Boots, the red tends to match. Yeah. If you have a bludgeon, it work, works like really well. My only problem with this is if I get the head, now I gotta go back to fucking NMZ to get those points so I can imbue the Slayer helmet. Truth. God damn. Yep. 
The next one, which I like a lot, next change they did was to Conar's loot table. They gutted it. It's gone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so the way they changed it, and a lot, I've had a lot of people in the CC ask what the hell this is. And in general, instead of you getting a drop from the from the loot table, you now get Conar's key, and it is stackable. The keys stack on each other, so it's like I know in Hydra it's a one in fifty to get a key. But in general, PVM, you know, you just get like a random item here and there. You're like, oh, that's cool. But for sometimes some- you don't even notice. You just think it's part of the exactly, monster drop right? table. Yeah, exactly. And that was like my big issue with it. Where it's like, I don't want to look up to see if they like changed like a loot. Like, I just got 50k from a worm. Is that normal? Oh, I hit the loot table. You yeah. Know? But now it's a key. And so it one, it does a lot of nice things. One, it frees up your inventory while you're actually doing Slayer. Because the worst feeling is having to stop mid-task because you have a full inventory. Because now they all stack. Two, merchanting propaganda. You can now do <laughs> opening 50 keys. Yeah. Which I have like three or four saved up right now. I've been kind of unlucky. But, you know, I guess four, it w- works out a bit better because the chest is by Konar. So if they go to Konar and open it up like that, mm-hmm. which is just more of like, oh, you go into my keys. <laughs> you know, if he's bringing balance and all this stuff, that's his whole lore. And, you know, you get his items, you get to open up his chest. Like, it's, it's kind of cool. So, I, I like that. Yeah, it's more fun. And then the Worm, Drake, and Hydra Bones now give more experience. So, Worms are 50, Drakes are 80, and Hydra are 100 experience when buried. Cool. Yep. Poison protection from Hydras. So, the poison protection from potions like Anti-Poison, Serp Helm, now reduce the damage taken from the special... Poison attack. All right. And dragon fire from Drakes. So the fire attack the Drakes shoot at you can now be resisted by dragon fire protection, such as an anti shield. This as it like, and this will work as it does with metal dragons. So neat. All right. Aerial fishing. You can now trade the golden tenches to Auri for 100 mulch pearls. All right. Architectural Alliance. Recently pulled. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Players <laughs> will no longer lose favor in one of the Quran houses if they perform tasks in other houses, regardless of whether or not they have started the Architectural Alliance. Pretty much, hey, 10k runecrafting experience. There agility. you go. We're we'll going agility. Or agility for Dills. Um, yeah, you can speak to Hosa, which he's at the statue of King Rada outside of the Quran castle for that uh, free free land. Well, Got to be level 40 or above. Mm. Okay, well, that happened. Does this change, um, I'm trying to think, would this change 10 HP or Obi Mall accounts? Add it to, like, Slayer or something? Like, if I, I don't know, probably doesn't matter. Yeah, it probably, sure. it, I think with Obi Mallers, it might change a bit. I don't know if it would be more efficient to do this as opposed to just, like, Slayer normally. Maybe in the long run, you save, you could be saving range experience, or you would be. Yeah. So I guess, yes. Anyways. Anyways, now we're going to be moving on to some good old community chatter. So first things first, apparently there was a third-party client going around that was... eh, It was pretty much a botting client. In the sense that it was meant for PvP, and it was able to detect what your opponent was attacking with, and it would automatically change your prayers to, to prevent... to protect from that attack style. Yeah. So if you're two amelling each other, and then your opponent switches to range... The client would detect that and would change your prayers for you. Yep. Something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Not sure how long this has been gone on because obviously if you have your hands on this client, you don't really want people to know about it. Um, Spoilers, decent amount of time. Yeah. I mean, excellent client is still a thing. Which one's that? Tells you how much loot you PK'd. It has a Zara guide built into it. Tells you what to stand, what to pray, all that stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of illegal features to it. Um, there are also clients slash bots for uh, PKing clans at Auto Scout. Yeah. Okay. Um, the P the the competitive PKing scene is a lot more scummier the more you get into it. Yeah, I can see that. Well, yeah, I, I guess that's obvious. We all know how PKers are. But anyways, continue. But the whole DDoSing. But yeah, Mod Archie basically made a post saying, regarding the recent third-party client concerns, we're aware of your comments regarding the said clients giving players unfair advantages in-game over other players, particularly 
auto-changing prayers and gear. We want to make it clear we classify this as botting. We have, we have and will continue to take action against players we find to be abusing such features. So, boom, this thing existed. But if you're using it, you're, it's only a matter of time. It's it's only a matter of time before you get banned. You you know it's a, uh, of course, right? I don't know. Do we need to explain how it's, why it's sketchy? But yeah. Um. On a side note, though, the amount of PKers that use AHK is disgusting. Yeah. So this was supposed to fall in the same. Like, there's the two of them are kind of gl- lumped together. So I don't want to say this. And advocate, or I'm not going to advocate for anything, but I'm going to just say this. PKers use AHK scripts to switch gear, prayers, and, like, notably do one-tick specs and stuff. Don't get caught. Mm. I'm going to say that because um, they don't. Um, You might get caught, depending on how your script is set up, but it's... There are streamers that you... Or they don't... They actually don't play RuneScape anymore, and I I don't want to name the person... But I used to watch them when I first started playing, like, years ago. Like, when I got into old school. Who got famous by pretending to be very popular PKer back in the day. He, hmm. like, got the name in a um, not moral way. I don't want to I don't want to sell it who it is. But <laughs> they they took the person's name. They, they, they did whatever. They maybe hacked the account, changed the name, put the name on their account, and then pretended to be that person. On stream. Okay. And they used AHK, but I just thought they were really good because it was, oh, it's, I'm not, it's not I, Maham, I, but like, I'm going to use like, oh, he streams RuneScape. That's crazy. And then you like, you watch him and you're like, dude, he's still so good at PKing. He's gotten like good. He's still as good as he was. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In terms of like percentile. And then you learn that he uses AHK in his script pops up on stream like four or five times and he's never been banned and now he doesn't play RuneScape anymore because no one watches him. Yeah. But um, there's like a lot of like, yeah, scripts and AHK and stuff like that go on in the PKing scene, which you only notice if you um are at like the top level. Like if you're just like in the wild and some dude just kills you, it's not like he's using AHK. Most likely he's, you know... Just like us, just like, hey, I'm bored. I want to go PK. That would be fun, you know. But if you're doing, like, high-risk fights and stuff, you'll bump into these people quite a bit. Hmm. But, yeah. So, hopefully, Jagex actually just start cracking down on it. Same with Excellent Client. I, I know people that have thousands of Zara kills using that client. And they never got caught. That being said, like, people have been banned for using that client. So, don't go ahead because Deegan has an anecdote where his friend hasn't been banned. Yeah, just be honest. Don't don't try and cheat the game. Yeah, because if it does happen, you're gonna you're gonna probably wish you never used it in the first place. Yeah. no matter how long you got away with it. Yeah, but it's the way she goes. But speaking of third party clients, everyone's favorite Rune Light came out with a pretty cool plugin that you had actually made me aware of. Yeah, they have a party system now where you can party up with other players. It will show their names, their health. And their prayer points, like a typical MMO party system. Yep. They'll have that displayed. You can see them on the map where they are. Mm -hmm. And you can also see what tiles they're clicking on, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Last cool thing to note is Discord integrated. Right. So you can see somebody playing Rune Light and you can ask, request to join their party. Right? Yeah. Is that how that works? Yeah. So it makes it really cool. I love love how Rune Light is integrated with Discord. But I do have some concerns now. Uh Uh-oh. So with this implementation and with how it's open sourced and with how evidently third-party clients, there are like underground third-party clients that like are very sketchy. Yep. That go undetected. So with this, I'm like, okay, if someone's like super good at programming, like, man, Deegan's an idiot and he's assuming way too much. But... Now it's like very apparent that your clients can communicate to another client and it can t- receive and send information to other clients. Mm. So does this compromise your account security? Huh. Yeah. Are you able to like modify a Rune Light esque client to talk and see where they're clicking, but also what they're typing 
and rune, the rune light client still communicates with discord it'll say you're on the login screen yeah like it, it's not like it only is being like utilized by discord and all that when you're in game it'll you can see that someone's like oh deegan's always on rune light sitting at main page 12 hours he just didn't turn off his pc you know yeah it's true so does this open up the ability to like easily key log or like get the information of like someone's typing in their password and their logins like is, does this compromise the security of rune light mm-hmm. and not even just rune light but like i guess so because like, i mean it's like maybe you can modify a client or like make your own client and like jump in on like the back end of like you know what i mean like like, like sneak your way in somehow and like it, it kind of like it's really neat surface level i think it's super cool like coaching you could like like help like oh man i'm so bad at doing this part on this boss let's join a party i'll stand here while you do this you're clicking the wrong spots at the wrong time you know yeah or even like let's say you're doing ohm and you're trying to dodge the crystals that happen you could they could watch you and see how you're clicking to dodge them oh he's clicking yep even like in a pattern almost yeah if you're attacking while the spikes are falling like how are you like getting the timings right like look look at my click patterns or like Mm -hmm. yeah anything like that that's yeah some dude styles on you some dude's like ice skating in in edgeville with like the right the hunter the hunting cabot crossbow or whatever yeah ice skating you can like it's like you make you make your dude slide around in really cool ways with certain with that with a crossbow, and you could like you know he could teach you how to do it in game. Like there, it opens up a lot of really cool things, but I really hope Jagex goes out of their way to make sure that this is secure because I would hate for someone to automatically just be like eh, let's see what uh Deacon's doing main screen cool press a button and. Boner soups his password. We got him. You know, yeah. <laughs> like kind of worrisome, but it's really neat how they. Like, I still like the idea. It just makes me worry a bit more. It's good to be aware. You never know, right? Yep. Anyways, lo- moving on to our last bit of things to talk about within the community is the that old Runescape Moments YouTube channel. Yep, the, the one, one I uh, bitched about. Yeah, the one year. that. Basically, just gathers a bunch of Twitch clips every week, mm-hmm. puts it together in a video, and you can watch the big moments of it. Well, he has been permanently demonetized, at least for the time being. He made a video explaining that this is what's happening. Uh, Jagex, I guess, doesn't want to be making money off other people's content. YouTube is also going ahead and demonetizing it because of that. Mm-hmm. But he's trying to appeal it. Fuck him. Yeah, that's that's it. I haven't watched them since I bitched about them a while ago. Them. Could be a woman doing it. But, um... Pretty sure it's a guy because you hear his voice from time to time. Oh, do you? Okay. And not like I've watched the videos. I Okay, I may or may not have been duped by a stupid clickbaity title where it's like... I don't know. S- skill specs. Leaks. Uh, whatever. Does yeah. something. You're like, well, I gotta watch this. And you watch the whole video and you're just like... Wait, wait a minute, when the hell, this never yeah. happened. Mod Ash, penis exposed, question mark, question mark. You're like, I'll, take, right. I'll take the chance. All right, I'll watch 10 minutes to see if I can find it. And you go through and you're like, oh, so the question marks was the question, the, the answer to the question is no. Yeah. The main reason why I'll just quickly go over why this channel is super scummy is because chances are, I know there's like a lot of um, channels that do this, but it's very you can make it very automated where... Pretty much what this guy does when all these like top highlight clips, like these Twitch clips and stuff, they go to if it's daily, the most popular clips of the day. Um, when you go to the game category or whatever, and then you just you know have like a um a, like a an add on or something, or and you just download the top ten, you throw them in, boom, plug your. I'm, I'm assuming this guy has merch. I'm gonna assume he does. I don't know though. But, um, and then they have, like, things like subscribe, comment, click the bell notification, like everything. Chance to win 50 mil. That no one ever admits that they win. Yeah, leave your RSN, like, all that. He does, like, every scummy thing you can do, he checks off. And he just sits back and makes money. Yeah. Um, all those Fortnite clips is the yeah. same thing. Uh, they'll have, like, bot accounts that follow... Like the top X, like they'll have like certain streamers that they just follow, and then they take their Fortnite related clips and they just mash it all together. 
and it is extremely easy money and like it's weird but like it's usually one or two people that have like 50 youtube accounts and they have like um like programs that are like created or like scripts and it's very automated and very quickly like quickly done like they, they don't they don't put that like they put little to no effort but they also make a lot of money even like tiktok and vine compilations um it's the same thing and they always have like merch that they plug for like 40 seconds in the beginning yeah um it's extremely scummy uh practice but it's really effective yeah it does and like i said those titles if there's anything we can learn from that those clickbait titles work yeah hey mod ash exposed question mark no, no, he wasn't. But Deegan gets a Tebow this episode on on podcast? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? That's the you hear his epi- live reaction episode one twenty. Deegan gets two Tebows? Question mark? Like, Deegan perma band? Deegan and Dill's perma band? Then answer no. Dills and Deegan died? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uploading. There is a third party in this yeah. podcast. Just have someone else like intro. <laughs> just bait everyone. That'd be one dark episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're shut down for now. I mean, he can still make videos, just not making money off of it. Well, he's going to start plugging merch, and he'll probably just make another account. Or make a Patreon. Yeah. Um, keep in mind, they don't do it for the love of the game. The biggest complaint is that you see is that the top comment usually is, like, framed or, like, whoever... Because Frame, uh, he's a YouTuber, does PK stuff, but he also streams. Like, And so if you watch his streams, you'll kind of spoil the YouTube episodes. Because a lot of the stuff he does in his YouTube clips are like on stream. Yeah. And this guy doesn't care, though. He takes his clips, which are going to be in his YouTube video, and puts it in this. And it, he's had many times his big build-up clickbait moment in his, in his YouTube videos are like being monetized and, like, used by other people before he can even make a YouTube video out of it. Because, mm. like, you know, he's going to make a 10-minute and 2-second video, right? To capitalize yeah. on the ads and stuff. And he will... And he specifically has said, I don't mind if he uses my content for money, but ask beforehand. And the guy never has asked. He never... Yeah. He just does it to everyone. It takes time. You got to wait for a response. And now... The YouTube video's out. You and could have been first. He does it with everyone and everyone. All, like, all the people that kind of get their, like, YouTube videos ruined or spoiled. Like, it kind of sucks, right? Like, they're, they're the ones putting in all the effort. And this guy isn't even having an automated tweet or, like, a DM to these guys. Like, you know. Yeah. It's kinda, he's kind of just a dick. So, that's, that's the way she goes for now. Yep. Stay tuned. And with all that being said, it is now... Our time to teleport back in time to January 30th to February 5th and the 7th of 2001. This is the segment where we get to go back in time and look at some of the updates that they added week by week, 18 years ago. I have to do the math. Anyways, uh, yeah, 18 years ago. So first things first is further combat improvements. Following Saturday's update, the combat system has been tweaked further. Retreating was still too difficult, so this has been improved and made easier. Also, the keep three best item rules have been modified. If you attack another player, then you now lose the item protection for 20 minutes of the game time. Sculling was added. This makes the player killing aspect of the game more dangerous and exciting, but also increases your potential reward. As if you kill someone else without item protection, you can now get the best loot. People without item protection have a small skull drawn over them. And, after many requests, the guards in Varrock City now attempt to stop people fighting. There are a large number of guards at the bank, so assuming that they haven't all been killed, you can now withdraw your money more safely. So, yeah, if you don't know, back in these days, PvP was everywhere. Kinda cool that the guards would attack you if you were attacking other players. Dead man mode used to just be RuneScape. Shit, minus the experience. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Next is... A new section of the sewer has been opened. Watch out because it contains deadly red spiders. Fight them to get the rare red spider eggs, which can... Ah. (laughs) Sorry, continue. I don't get it. Well, like red spider eggs by my NMZ. Uh, They're they're just like the most common thing now. Back then they weren't. You can take them and other ingredients to the apothecary in Varrock, and it can be used to make a four-dose strength potion. Herblore. The beginning of Herblore. Yeah, but I like how it's um, 
spider egg instead of limpwort. Yeah, but it also says and other ingredients, so maybe mm-hmm. it's limpwort as well. And lastly, it is the newsletter. This is the second newsletter that they had produced at the time. So what's new in RuneScape? Most of you are probably aware about the player killing in RuneScape has been changed. And the bank we promised in the last newsletter has been added to the city and is a safe place to store your money. Following a large amount of attacks just outside the bank, the city has paid to put multiple armed guards around the bank here to protect people who have just withdrawn money. The guards have increased since the last increase. The magic system has also been modified. Magic spells no longer depend on your ranged combat skill. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Mm-hmm. So you no longer need to be a higher level range to use them effectively. Spells were also made stronger, but they were also but they were still too weak, so they got made twice as strong. And as we had just mentioned, the new sewer area, which contains two new monsters, deadly red spiders, and the exceedingly strong moss giants. So what's planned in the future? They want to modify the trade window to display the names of items to prevent unfair trading. God, I guess they didn't have the names before. You just had to look at the icon and know what it was. Mm -hmm. A lot more spells to be added. Proper support for clans with a full system to allow players to join and create clans. What? It only took them 10 years, I guess. Mm -hmm. God, imagine they had a better clan system that they ended up scrapping when RuneScape 2 came out. Hmm, We'll see. A dual feature. Challenge your rivals to a duel with a risk and reward set as you like. They want to add more skills, such as fishing and fletching. Mm -hmm. These have not existed yet. And they want to add a friends list to indicate what friends are online. And of course, more quests, monsters, and more areas of the map. But this is pretty interesting. They wanted to add a high scores, the top 25 players at this time. So the top 25 players, players with the highest total level. Number one is Lightning with 682. Then you had Sun John at 593, Ashley at 583, Sir at 570. Keeps going down. I see no noticeable names. But interesting to see that the top player at the time had 682 total level. Mm-hmm. There was, I forget what his name was. Um, he was very vocal about RuneScape Classic shutting down. Mm-hmm. But he was one of the first people to like play like like day one. Yeah. And he played up until RS2 came out, but then he stuck around in RuneScape Classic. He was very vocal when they announced the shutdown. Forget what his name was, but... um, hmm, Yeah, because all those memories, gone. But they also had a... Anyways, they also have on the high scores that they put in this new letter, newsletter, top 25 fighters. So the highest total skill level only with combat skills. Mm-hmm. Again, Lightning at 230, Robin Hood 2 at 217. But I did notice number 16 was Rodrigo at 187. I think that's someone in our clan chat. It's a little shout out there. It's probably a different person. Anyways, the top 20, they had the top 25 player killers. So Wolf had 132. Hell's Archer had 117. I'm not going to go through all N-word. of them. N-word. <laughs> <laughs> Toxic PKers P- existed back then. And this was a weird one, So, but the top 25 smithers. So this is the highest total level with only mining and smithing, which is demonic, which is with 110. God, that's low. It's oh, like yeah. level 50 and a level 60. Keep in mind, like, banking was like, there was no, like, efficient, like, you had to, like... There was no banks. But, like, they weren't, when they, even when they were adding banks, to my knowledge, they weren't all connected Hmm, so it, it may like it's a very like very much you mine walked and smith it or smelt it and then you walk and then make the items mm-hmm. or you just buy them in certain areas but yeah yeah so there but going down that list number 18 blue rose 13 x yep with 86 are you familiar with that name is it the blue rose versus zesma saga possibly this is that's the first player who got 99 smithing Yep. And they made a killing off selling rune two-handers and other items. I was going to say, the reason why they have smithing implemented into this is because that was literally how armor was brought into the game. Yeah, the only way. Yeah, so, like, every piece of mithril and, like, adamant, well, not every piece, because they do have, like, the leg shop and stuff like that, but, like, the the actual sets of armor and stuff people were wearing were, were from other people that were smithing. They were able to get to 99, and they did, they got to choose how much things went for. Yeah, they literally monopolized, like, the rune market, 
And it was such a problem that people outsourced their supplies to Zesma. This is how Zesma got 99 Smithing. Hmm. They outsourced all the like people. Like, it was like a GoFundMe, like <laughs> for for Smithing. And he was like, "I'm just gonna cut the cost. I'm gonna like reduce everything by half." Guys, I'm almost there. Just help me. And then, from my understanding, is that he got 99 Smithing and was like, "Nah, nah. I'll cut the cost by five percent." But like, not even like 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 it, now it's two people. Then he's dumped. collaborating with yeah. Blue Rose. Yeah, and that's when people like people got really upset with them. But hey, first got to hit 99s and everything. So like that kind of overshadows his scumminess. But yeah, from what I remember, like that. Well, like. I don't even say it's scumminess. He probably gets there and he's like, I have all this power. But the big thing is that, like, it was, like, a community. Like, smithing was, like, Slayer. Yeah. It was everything. You know what I mean? Like, well, Slayer, I mean, that's where you get your weapons. And yeah. it seems like at this time, the game revolved around PvP. Mm-hmm. So you want the best armors. You can only get it from the smithers. And... This is even in the future. Right now, no one is making... I don't even think Rune Armor exists. No, no one's able to make it. Yeah. That's very cool. I didn't know about that side of the story. I just knew about Blue Rose Yeah, getting 99 and then dominating the market, and they're choosing how much whatever piece of armor is going for. Oh, yeah. Like, early game, old school MMOs have like a lot of these really dope-ass stories like that. Where yeah. Like, yeah. When you- things were that big of a struggle where you want a Rune two-hander, yeah, you need the money, but you also need to know when Blue Rose is online yep. to trade them. Yep. So people are waiting, like, when do they log on? Mm-hmm. they got to wait for them to finish school. And you're like, oh, man, our time then, zones are different. And then even then, I, I don't I don't know if this happened, but I, I can imagine. Someone goes on, buys their whole stock. Yeah. And, and then, then they can help also dominate. So they can flip. But Yeah, bit. yeah. So now they're going to sell for even more. Hey, Blue Rose, like, I, I just talked to them. They're taking a really big dump and going to work. So they're gone for eight to nine hours. You got to deal with me, and now you're paying twenty k extra. Mm, you yeah, know, like people would definitely. You're not going to buy it and sell for less. Like you're going to flip, make money. So typically, if you wanted to buy like this end game gear, let's say Wolf has killed you twenty times when you're banking because there's no guards. Yep, you have to go to Rose quite a bit. Like it's super cutthroat and like unforgiving like it's so it's wild west like literally it's yeah that's cool i um i can't wait to go through more of these dev blogs to see Mm -hmm. when things they go hey first person to get they they probably are gonna gonna yeah they are probably going to announce when the first person gets 99 right Mm -hmm. because if they're doing it now it's probably an exciting moment so it's gonna be cool to see how these things develop because right now Blue Rose is only 18 in the list you would think lightning or whoever was top is going to be the one who's going to be getting the first 99 but yeah. something happens down the road we'll find out right yep but anyways that's it for uh looking back in time at some of these things so let's move on to lore reopen runescape classic what, you want to open the game reopen it that- <laughs> <laughs> start from fresh yeah. let's vote let the what do they call it? the power to the players no no, no. let's just start right from day one <laughs> just like how it is now and there's We'll go right up until they remove remove free trade, and then we just restart the servers. And just do that over and over again. It's a season. Season's last 10 years, yeah. though. Crazy. Uh, anyways, let's move on to lore. <laughs> Before Guthix first stepped onto Gilinor, the Elder Gods were the ones who ruled. Jas is the oldest and most powerful of the Elder Gods. His powers were woven into an artifact known as the Stone of Jazz. It also goes by the names of the Fist of Guthix, the Eye of Ceridomen, the Catalyst, and the Cabbage of a Thousand Truths. When the Stone of Jazz was created, the god enslaved the Dragonkin race, and their sole purpose was to protect this artifact. When one uses this stone, the dragon can begin to feel pain. They become enraged and causes them to seek out destruction. The dragon can know this pain as the curse. Not all dragon can fully succumb to this curse though. One of these dragonkin decided to resist this curse and chose to focus on finding a cure. He began experimenting on different dragons in areas on Gilinor. This dragonkin is known as Zorgoth. He first set up a laboratory on Crandor 
where he experimented on a green dragon, which we know as Elvarg. Eventually, he finds a breakthrough in his experiments trying to find a cure for the curse, which requires him to find a larger facility. Zorgoth moved his laboratory from Crandor to Ungale, where he began experimenting on blue dragons. While experimenting, he created two creatures, which he named Vorkath. Vorkath roughly translates to pathetic failure, weakling, or runt in the dragonkin language. These were failed experiments, as, as they had lacked the aggression he was hoping for. In his rage, he destroyed one of these experiments. As time went on, Zorgoth made plans to have another lab created on Lithgren. Zorgoth would eventually get word that humans were moving in on Ungale, so he had made orders for the construction of a laboratory on Lithgren. When these humans began to make their way to Ungale, Zorgoth fled to Lithgren leaving one of his failed experiments to sit there, dormant. Even though Zorgoth called Vorkath a failed experiment, Vorkath still had phenomenal strength. Vorkath was a very powerful monster. But due to the lack of aggression, Vorkath can be found lying, sleeping, waiting on the island of Ungale. But humans should not be mistaken. If provoked, Vorkath will unleash his fury, trying to devour any foe who disrupts him and disturbs his sleep next week for lore the alchemical hydra and we're back so now we stroll over to that grand exchange where we get to talk about audible trial go to audibletrial.com slash wild to get a free book and a free well you get a free month that comes with a free book so yeah definitely do that i've uh actually just ordered these three runescape books they're novels apparently they're very good a bunch of people in the clan chat have been ordering them and I know some people started reading them. They've told me it starts off pretty good and interesting. It's not your typical, you don't. It's Tutorial Island. It's like <laughs> yeah. use, player uses left click and like it's very, it's a good <laughs> 99 and are like, hey, I got two wood cutting. Yeah. Leveled up and there. As I entered Verrock and there's 18 pages of like want to buy, buying GF. It's just like. <laughs> Just people dialogue. saying, yeah, just people saying random crap. Just the person dies in it, and you think that's the end of the main character. No, they just run back to the body and loot it. Yeah. Um, actually, though, not like that at all, obviously. It's supposed to be just a normal fantasy book, just taking place in the RuneScape world. I'm, I've am i actually, yeah, I'm ordered them, and I'm pretty excited about that. And um, we got this little book discussion thing we got planned. Book club. It, yeah, a little book club that sounds kind of cool. Anyways, more information after this, but if you don't want to read, you want to listen, it might be available on Audible. I have no idea. I never even actually checked. But yeah, audibletrial.com slash wild if you want to be a part of that. And if you want to directly support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash the wilderness podcast. Our supporter of the week is Anthony Martinez. I feel like I shouted him out recently, but you know what? The the list here is that's what's up next. So if if we did, you get another one. Congratulations. Money yeah. well spent. Yeah. So thank you for supporting the show. Um really can't thank you guys enough. It's it's very we very much appreciate it. And yeah. And thank you to everyone who does support us. And thank you to everyone who listens and gives us such kind words every week. The emotional support. The emotional support it's it's just as important. Yeah. Financial, emotional, uh physical, maybe down the road. We'll yeah, see, maybe at RuneFest we'll all meet up, get some physical support going. Yeah, <laughs> and carry each other around. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, yeah. So moving on to podcast news stuff. I wanted to mention this last week, but as I said, we were kind of overwhelmed with some things. Everything got. It doesn't matter. But we had our best of the year for 2018 that we were pulling for the week of January for the most part for the whole month. Let's just say. And this is probably a good time to go over it. So we had the best update for 2018 and with 58.8% being the mobile client. Theater of Blood came second. So saw mm -hmm. that one coming. That seemed pretty fair. Yep. Best free to play update. First place was free to play PvP Worlds. Second place was Byrofita. Really, it's just those two options because any poison potions came was the only other one, which mm -hmm. got some votes, but pity, yeah. pity votes. Yeah. The best quality of life update. So the winner was the farming timer rework with 35.3%. Coming at se second place with 176 was the item collection log. The best new item of 2018. First place was the Vorkath Uniques, which is the Dragon Bow Necklace, the Dragon Fire Ward, and the Ava's Assembler with 29.4%. Tied for second 
was the mythical cape, the rev cave weapons, the dragon plate body, shield, and crossbow, and the dragon leather shields. So those uh, all got equally voted on as well. Hmm. The best event, first place was Theater of Blood, race to the fir- race to first completion. And then tied for second place was the bot busting stream and rune fest in its, in its entirety. The best in-game event, so tied for first place, was the five-year anniversary and the April Fool's dev blog. And then second place was the Christmas event. The best nerf slash buff. So first place was the dual arena tax. Taxing. Seems, seems about right. And then second place was the new wikis. Best Rune Fest announcement. First place was the Cabos Lowlands. And then tied for second was the Farming Guild and Song of the Elves. And lastly, the biggest controversial moment. It was Mud Jed. Yep. With uh, 70%. But more interesting was, uh, I guess, second place, because everyone knew Mod Jed was going to come first. Second place was the Rune Light Shutdown. Mm-hmm. And third place was a friend's account ban, gambling advertising. Hmm. So that's pretty cool. Thanks, everyone, for uh, su- submitting your votes. We appreciate it. And next year, we'll be doing the same. We'll take a look and see what we'll have to see what this year brings. Yeah. Already off to a good start with controversy, though. Mm-hmm. And we also have been teasing about this hide-and-seek event that we have planned. It sh- it'll be coming up in the next couple weeks. I've been busy the past two weekends, so we had to postpone the event. But myself and Magpie have been talking about having this hide-and-seek event where, you know... You get a couple hints, and you have to go find Magpie, and the first handful of people there, you get you get some reward. So if you are interested in that, check our Twitter, or Discord's probably the best. We have an events channel, which you can keep up to date to all that stuff, uh, and I'll tell you how, you how you can get in contact with that in a minute. But we also have planned a little, as we mentioned already, a book club, or we're or basically just chapter discussions a bunch of people decided to start ordering these runescape novels i kind of want a new novel to start even though i have a bunch that i need to start but people mentioning this i kind of got interested as well so i ordered them and we were all talking and figured it'd be kind of cool to set x amount of chapters each week to read and then maybe discuss them on discord somewhere so if you're interested on that uh the pdfs are available for free online you just have to search for them or maybe you want to check on audible trial.com slash wild. But yeah, if you are interested in that, jump in Discord and keep your eye out and look for the little channel that'll probably be for the book club thingy. Hopefully the books are good. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and that's about it for that. But we do have, it's not over yet. We have two emails to go through. So, so our first email is from Tyler. And he says, just recently started listening to the podcast as it's been years I have since I have played RuneScape. I immensely, immensely enjoy the insight you guys provide. However, as stated above, getting back into the groove of things, I find myself lacking in the GP at all times. Any chance of making a podcast about gold making for those getting back in or lower levels? Thanks again for all the hard work. Sincerely, the Ever Mage. So thank you very much for your email and your kind words there. Making GP is kind of a big conversation to have because there's so many different ways you can make money yeah, at we, varying levels too, right? We can be super brief, but in general though, like we could just do like a bonus content where we just like sit down. That yeah, might be a good idea because there's a lot to go through and yeah. Well, I mean like, like, like off podcasts or right now, like I, maybe I'll work on that this week or something for like bonus content. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So that's uh something we could plan to do. Yeah. Because otherwise this episode might drag on for like four hours. Because, yeah, there's so many different ways to do it, whether you're free to play. Deegan mentioned earlier about flipping, but that's also kind of risky because Mm -hmm. there's some money to be lost. I mean, I lost a bunch of money trying to flip before. Um, Yeah, there's just tons of ways. There's, there's, yeah, a ton of different methods. So, and a lot of it is that it scales the higher you are and the more time you put into certain things, you unlock better methods of making money. And you can also do things like have alternate accounts, AFK, make certain mon- like money for you as you do other things. It really depends on um, how you want to do it. But there's like, in my understanding, there's active and passive money making. So dailies, kind of. Um, but like merching and stuff like that would be considered passive. Um, dailies, like short, you do like you know, your battle stats, takes 10 seconds. Yeah, so, so if the- you're a member, you can do your Varrock Diaries which 
as you go through easy, medium, hard, and elite, you get access to more these things called battle staffs from the staff shop. And these battle staffs, as Deegan mentioned earlier, are made into like elemental battle staffs, fire, water, earth. But you can just like sell them the GE or whatever. Yeah, so you, that's who that's who you'd be selling it to is someone who's crafting them. But so oh. you, you can buy them cheaper from the diaries for seven K and they always sell for over eight K. Yeah. Um, so that's easy. You can do that once a day. It's like five or ten easy. Yeah, but there's like certain levels of like effort and money, but there's like active. So like if you're just try if you're treating the game like a not a job, but like if you're just trying if you're thinking in terms of making money, it's like if you want to min max your money gains, there are certain things that are t- like time effective that make you easy money that you can do like once a day. Passive merching, finding safe or risky flips, finding um margins on items that people don't flip playing around risking whatever and then also when you're actually in game doing things like slayer for like the first like 75 to like 80 ish levels you make okay it's not the best money but also you're probably a low level it's like at slayer once you hit level 70 is when you're going to start noticing like a bump up in your money yeah you get gar well 75 gargoyles and eventually you'll get like neck reels and boss tasks and all that or, like, skilling, like, there's, like, a lot of different things, but we can, like, I could, or we could, uh, have, like, an episode, like, a bonus episode dedicated to just the idea of, like, theory of making money, because, like, there's a lot to go through, because like, depending game- on what level you are, um, like, where you would start off, but let's say you're, like, fresh player from, uh, a mobile account, let's just say, well, like, what would you say, start looking at this to make money, because you don't want to say... Do Slayer, because at level 70, you're going to be making a lot of money. It's like, well, I need money before then. Cow hides. This cow hides is a great way to start off, right? That's how. Like, I would, if someone's new, cow hides. That's completely fresh off tutorial island, for the most part. Cow hides, you'll make some money, because people need to train their crafting. Yeah. And eventually, by the time you hit the levels to actually buy the gear, you have enough money to buy the gear. But yeah, there is a lot to talk about when it comes to making money. So then, I think we will focus on a better guide in the upcoming weeks, maybe it's its own standalone episode, or maybe we'll tack it on to a shorter episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is one advice that I used to give people who are buying bonds for me- like they're using membership through bonds and they were struggling to make the money each, each two weeks. Yeah. I'd always say like, get your diaries done as much as you can for Varrock. So you can get those battle staffs, get your farming up so you can do Ranars. And uh, plant those. And um, there's another one, too. Bird houses used to be good, but not yeah. anymore. But those things are easy. You can just jump on once a day to run through them and sp- spend, like, no more than 20 minutes mm-hmm. doing them. And you'll get some fair money over time. And that will just help supplement everything else you're doing. So you, And then eventually you'll, your account's just going to be higher level. So you'll be making money through Slayer or through whatever it is you're doing. Um. And then, yeah, you get to the higher levels and bossing's where it's at, right? Mm-hmm. Slayer and then bossing. Then you can eventually unlock methods where you make, like, over, like, the, you know, an appropriate amount of time, not, like, right out the gates, like, like um, Hydra, like, over, like, a thousand kills or whatever, X amount of hours, um, you, you should average 5.5 mil an hour Yeah. So and even if you're paying... Raids, three mil like like eventually you get to the point where in like a day like let's say you just grind zara for like a day like on average you have like more than enough for a bond it gets to the point where it's exponential so you kind of need to put in the time get the quest done level up and also like be efficient with your time because not everyone can sit down and grind for 12 hours straight yeah time is kind of a more valuable resource than gold hmm so, you know, bonds, just buy bonds. That's pretty much what we're saying. Yeah, eventually your account gets to a point where you don't need, even if you can afford to pay each month, you don't need to. No, I'm no, I'm saying buy bonds and sell them for gold. That's that's the best oh. money maker in, in the game. You know What you do, let's say you make money in RuneScape. You go work on McDonald's as a second job, and all those paychecks you put right into bonds. <laughs> it's actually the case in RuneScape 3, though. Yeah. People, people did the math, and it's the most efficient way to play RuneScape is to get a second job and just buy bonds or do the microtransactions and get the free experience. Yeah, fair enough. So. But, um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't recommend that, but... <laughs> hey, 
it's it's there depending on how much money you're making. But um, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely revisit this topic because there's a lot to go through and episode's gone pretty long as it is. Mm-hmm. Very content heavy episode. So again, thank you for uh, for writing in, and we will be revisiting this. And our last message was from Antoine, and he says, I was curious on what you and Deegan think about the Iron Man specific accounts that are going on. They've become very popular in the community and have made channels like Settled and Turtle Tail grow immensely. Also, I was wondering what you think about when they will ask Jagex occasionally to add small things for them, like a furnace for Turtle Tail's instance in uh, Tranwin. Or, what was, what was that thing we mentioned earlier? Oh, we just mentioned it. God. Serum 207? Yeah, that's what it was for Settled. Yeah. Yeah, so these... Yeah, it seems like Settled got this, like, ball rolling. Even though people have been doing it before, Settled has been... Is a YouTuber who's made this very popular series, and he's put a lot of work and research into it. Yep. And it's just blown up. But he made an ultimate Iron Man who can't leave Mauritania. Yeah, this is after maxing his first ultimate Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I, I mean, I, I really enjoy his series. It's really good. I can see why all the hype is. You, well, we've complained in the past that the quality, like the actual video quality, like the content or like how like you RS YouTubers make their videos are very bad. Like all like, I, I like watching the PK YouTubers, but they are so sloppy. I like Bodie, but his YouTube is like, oh. And then just cuts. And yeah. like, 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 there's no, like, the production quality is bad. But, like, Swamp Letics has, like, and Chem Q. Those are, like, notably, uh, rest in peace, Chem Q. I uh, <laughs> got banned. But um, they, they're, they like, the two good examples of, like, high-quality videos themselves. I think that's why Swamp Letics is so popular now. One, it's a really good series. And he's, like, it's a very honest series where, like, he's dedicated to these ridiculous grinds. Where he makes really good progress each week. If you guys don't watch it, I mean, I recommend it. Like, just as a whole, as like an actual video you watch on YouTube, like it's it's very well done. And then and it's the, really cool it, to see what his best in slots are. He did mm-hmm. research in the area. He just didn't pick, he didn't throw a dart at the map and went there. He didn't pull in a friend and go, "I can't get sharks." Well, you can. He can get sharks, but he's too lazy to. I'm gonna cheat. He's yeah. He's a very like his his. He's very true to like his series. Yeah, like, it, it's really good. Like there's also other good ones like Caveman Only. Yeah, that was that was yeah that one. I remember that. It's a really good series. Um, I don't watch it all the time, but like he's also very honest. Where like he gets ninety nines, and he's like, I have to leave a cave though. What do I? And then he, and then like the community and himself will figure out like a, if it's even possible or if he should. Be allowed to do something like get the cape once. Yeah. But, like, and have to do certain things to get it. But, like, he's got a very good series of Karamja. Um, Ultimate Iron Man has, like, he's had a really good series, too. Yeah, and that's another cool area because he's able to get full obsidian armor with the Tazar weapons and stuff like that. So, that being said, though, it is kind of a meme that there's a lot of people trying to, like, make it in the community yeah. by doing these weird... They jumped um, on the bandwagon. But it's pretty common that everyone quits after like five episodes because one, it's like, oh, I didn't think this through enough. Oh, in order to level up Slayer, I need to use Genie Lamps for like six months. And people aren't really willing to put in that grind. No. That being said, like, so overall, I like how they're these cool series. And once like it dies down, like, you know, Iron Man, every RuneScape YouTuber has an Iron Man series they abandon. Yeah. The odd ones that actually stick through it, like, have really good series and, like, great accounts, and it's really interesting. But Ultimate Iron Man specific areas seem to be, like, the new Iron Man for, like, YouTubers. Yeah. And I, I like it a lot. It's really interesting. And ironically enough, through, like, Swampletics and that whole hype, but then also talking to my one friend, I wanted to, like, make an account and then, like, in the closet play it for as long as I can. And if I'm going to like stick with it and make really good progress, then release all the footage I've captured. Yeah. But then like you go and start planning it and you're like, it's going to be like a year before I have any good content to release. Yeah. Oh my God. Like it's quite the dedication, which I guess brings us to the second question where, how do we feel about like um, questions or like, Things being suggested for these specific accounts. 
I don't think you should ever cater to one person specifically, right? Um, it it actually completely def- defeats the whole purpose of that account. Yeah. So they add a furnace to tier win or whatever, just but only specifically for this one person. It's different if they were going to release it with the new main city, anyways. Yeah, but if they're just like, eh, we'll throw it in there to help this guy out. It's Eh. one it makes the account less interesting like what if they added a way to train hunter at level one and now swamp Lettuce's six month grind becomes less interesting because what is he in a lamp now you know what i mean yeah what if they made it so you can cancel slayer tat like it, it what it doesn't actually takes away from the account the concept or the idea that like he can't just train a skill that's yeah. it that sucks if like or but there's always those methods when it comes to genie lamps genie it lamps. sucks but but then there's also like um in like a friend's case he just went to the like the fremenic area in his account and was like oh i can't do fremenic trials like my account's doa but if he did some research and looked into it he could have made some rules and added to it and like oh i can actually get raw sharks i have to find a way to complete olaf's quest as like honest as possible though yeah um so like, if you do add anything specifically for like these one-off accounts, it one integrity of the game. Two, it goes back in their whole like they won't do updates for specific accounts. Mm-hmm. Three makes the accounts less interesting to watch. Yeah. So yeah. So if they added um like imagine if Swamp Latex episode one spoilers by the way um spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen Blue Cape Swamp Latex meme season two but um. <laughs> if because his main thing is he's got to do a, a hard quest so he can use his poh yeah and what if they just added a like cannabis like house portal, yeah. you know then it takes away like a really big build up to like you know what i mean the hype of like one of his episodes is like being able to use his poh now yeah exactly um yeah don't <laughs> don't do it jagex don't cave to the community yeah only do if it's just ignore that one specific player if you're going to do it. If you were going to do it beforehand, then that's different. There's going to be a furnace added to Prif- Priftiness. Yeah. Anyway, so who cares? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I don't know. That's just an anecdote or example. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I enjoy these. They're pretty cool. Yeah. And if done well, like they're super interesting. Yeah. So, and I'm glad. I, it's a lot of research gets put in most of these at least. And yep. Yeah, super happy. And it gives so it's making me think, ooh, what about a wilderness only Iron Man, right? Mm-hmm. You, know, you start thinking because there's a furnace out there, there's places to mine. Mm-hmm. Cool things like that. I mean, I don't have the time to do it, so I'm not going to, but, you know, throw that out there and we'll see when that next YouTube series starts. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for your emails. And yeah, if you guys ever have any questions and stuff, let us know and we'll do our best to answer them or we'll revisit them in the future. Yeah. So that we don't release a four hour long podcast episode. Yeah, anyways, to do that, you can, uh, well, you can hang out with us in-game at WildCC. It's our clan chat. Mm-hmm. Our email is thewildernesspodcast at gmail.com. Our Twitter is at thewildernessrs. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash thewildernesspodcast. We also have a group in there that you can join and discuss RuneScape things on Facebook. And Discord. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We have a Discord. It's linked on Twitter and Facebook. And that's where... Probably most of the discussions happen. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. For all you people that um have been, like, actually, I was talking to one person that, like, has been listening for a while, and they're just like, never, I never joined the Discord. I'm like, do it up. And then they join. Like, okay. Yeah, there's a lot happening Feel here. free. Some people don't even use Discord, but from my understanding, you can still just do it on the web- websites. You don't need to download anything. Hey, and with this new Rune Light feature, there's more of a reason to get Discord. Yeah. You can party up with some people in the CC. You guys can go do some content, see where they're clicking. You know, yeah. inject something into your Runelight client and just keylog everybody. <laughs> but yeah, Discord's definitely the best place to go for your information because we have a place for events and then you can share pictures of your achievements or ask questions on PVMing. It's all that fun stuff. But yeah. anyways, Deegan, you got your things you want to throw out there? Twitch, Twitter, DNRS. There it is. I don't right. use Twitter much unless it's to sell an argument with a friend that's been not, not Dovey does, but a friend that's been... We've had an ongoing argument, and I'm totally right about it. Mod <laughs> Ash proved it. But um, follow me, twi- Twitch and Twitter, DeganRS. Yeah, there it is. Our song of the week is going to be Creeping Vines. This is the song that is unlocked in the Hespori Cave in the Farming Guild. And it was composed by Julian Surma. 
And, oh, man, it's a seven-minute song, so hang in tight. Mm -hmm. It ain't over yet. All right, guys, thank you for listening to this very content-heavy episode. Next week with uh, 121, isn't it? Yep. All right, guys, thanks again. Take care. Have a good one.